right, stop, stop, stop hugging it out and get over here. Let's go. Time to do this thing. It's time to do the NFL season as well. That was an um, important moment it for was. this station. You it know was. that. Because he, oh, he's know that. gone, and then coming up in I'm a not week. not gone yet. You guys will see each other tomorrow. No, he's, <laughs> he's gone. He's gone tomorrow? I thought he's, he said he's gone next week. He's gone tomorrow. Okay. He and is? Steven? Steven's like, Shasky gone Jesus. tomorrow? I'm pre- that's why I'm asking no, you. I'm gone tomorrow. You're going tomorrow? Yeah, I'm gone. It's my dad's memorial up in Eureka. Uh, you didn't tell me that. Tomorrow? You need to Google it. No, you told me you were taking next Friday off. Look, 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 look. <laughs> it's a, uh, I send out the are you schedule. Really? Every are you gone week. tomorrow? I'm on a stretch four. <laughs> when are you not? When a lot? No, I'm just okay. Oh, go sorry, ahead. Captain. I'm in Carl's bad. My father Dwayne <laughs> passed away six years ago. Rest in peace. Every year in August, he would go to the Humboldt County Fair for his only vacation. When he died, we agreed as a family, we as a family, mm-hmm. me and my siblings, Mikey 2.0, Douglas don't talk about uh, me, Gail don't Google me, a.k.a. Hurricane Gail, we agreed every year we would go up to Eureka and memorialize ah, him. That's great. We would sponsor a race in his name. That race is this Sunday. Got it. So I'm taking Friday off tomorrow. Got it. And I'm taking Monday on the backside. Hey, so I won't see Butcher Boy for about a month. Okay, did not know that. So we you had know, to hug it out. You learned uh, it, perfect. I always, I'm always in favor of hugging it out. I know you are. I yeah. hope that Trey Lance is hugging it out at the end of this game against the Houston Texans tonight, as opposed to being in the locker room in the in the uh, in the trainer's tent. Stop. That's putting what that I in hope. The universe. I hope. Gosh, I'm not putting it in the universe. You're it, jinxing him, Mark. It's football, and I don't believe in jinxes. Although all it I takes, kind of do after yesterday. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all, oh we can gosh. talk about that. Yeah, yeah. By the way, if we you want, that. if you want to know why Logan Webb's career is careening <laughs> out of control, it's Dan Dibley's fault. My fault. My all fault. Dan and I explained this to you. I explained this to you literally just a week and a half ago. I told the story of the lovely Christy in Tahoe walking over to him, sitting there watching on my phone. And I'm trying, and this is true for everybody who's ever watched baseball. If you're trying to pass along the news to a friend or a loved one or whatever, that there is a no-no going on. You're supposed to do it without using the phrase no hitter and skip this whole like, oh, you don't have, there's just not a, it's just the way we do it, okay? It's not like the wave actually hurts the game, but you don't do it because you just don't do it, okay? So there's no reason, there's no reason to scream no hitter when there's a no hitter. So I point to, I go, look, see the zero right there under the H? I go, check that out, right? And, and she goes, oh, he's got a no hitter? I look at her, I go, you realize the next guy's going to get a hit. Next guy, whack, ball goes right into center field. She goes, nice. I go, that's you. I just want you to know that's you. So yesterday, what happens as we start the fifth inning? Game's on here in the room, right here during our show. Right. I walk over during a break. I put my finger right next to the zero under the H. I go, take a look. Look, look at this. See that? I go, it's only the fifth inning, but eh, that's kind of fun. And you open the door to this studio and scream out into the hallway, hey, Logan Webb's got a no-hitter. And what happens? Six runs. That's on me. Six. What other reason do you got? Uh, Brandon Crawford can't field anymore. Brother, come on. I mean. He's lost his way. The whole He's inning. He's got no range. The whole inning went sideways the second you did that with all kinds of bad luck, by the way, for Logan. They barely hit the ball hard the whole inning. Six runs. Yeah. Yeah. And that thing Good got job. sideways. Yeah. Good job. So what you just did, though, for Trey Lance is very similar. You talked about the the tent. And you're not talking about him going camping. Look. So, I mean, if something happens to Trey Lance tonight. It's on you, brother. No, that's not that's not true. Uh, it's on all of you who are screaming at him. Let him play. That boy, this rookie season, uh, sorry, this second year season right. is only going to work if he gets these nine plays in tonight. Look, here. let me back up for a second because I actually don't have a problem. You want to back play. the truck up? I, yeah, back that thing up. I have, You're looking real good. I have no... Thank you. I got no problem. I completely expected him to play tonight. Kyle Shanahan said before the preseason even started, he's going to play in games one and three. I'm more projecting that if you look at the way sports is going, 
this is the direction it's going to go over the next decade. My overall point, this is less about Trey and tonight. This is more the bigger picture. We as fans and they as players have rallied against the preseason for years. It was part of the collective bargaining agreement. They wanted fewer preseason games. They got it down to, to three from four. Game three used to be the dress rehearsal. And then game four was the game that the players who mattered they kind of sat out of that hole. Well, now we're down to three. Well, where do you think it goes next? How long until it's two and then zero? And how long until the Super Bowl champions from last year and their philosophy, young player or old, if you are a clear starter and you matter, you out. You're out. You're not playing. It's just the way it's going to go. We went, for, but they won't ever get to where there's not two preseason games because there's too much money in it. That's probably they true. They make money. That's probably true. And that's where. But you, as a team, the player side, you don't have to. You don't have to play that game. There's no money in it for them. No, but why is Shanahan playing Trey Lance? Because that's the way we do it now. No, it's, it's because the they want to see some something more from Trey Lance. There's something about Trey Lance that they want to see. They want him to get more ready. Than he is. It's not about the money. This game is in Houston, and if the turf is this unsafe that you know Kyle Shanahan thought that it was going to hurt his player, he wouldn't play him. He wants Trey Lance to go through a two-minute drill, maybe go through a little bit more offensive work with with the O line. Whether it's the ones or the twos, it doesn't matter. Kyle Shanahan wants to see more yeah. from Trey Lance. And the players want to play, too. Look, I get it. You're gonna, I mean, Josh Allen gets announced as out in this game tonight, but he played. He played. Did he play both of the first two games? I know he played last week, and he played for almost a full half, and he played really well. Players don't go into it thinking like this, like, oh, gosh, I'm going to get hurt. If you're an NFL player, you are, by definition, already completely nuts. You're crazy and you're fearless to even go out on that field. So I don't think they're scared, and I think the football team looks at this like, look, we, there's only so much we can do. You're going to have to go through the gauntlet and find a way to stay healthy, and, and, and that's part of the deal. So, again, I'm not rallying against anything. I'm not offended. I'm not sending out a warning sign. But my thought is seven years from now, there will be a cost-benefit analysis on playing quarterbacks who are clear QB1s in the preseason – and I think people will tap out on it. I, I've never watched week one of a college football season and thought, boy, they just, they don't look like they know what to do. They haven't had enough practice. They haven't had enough, you know, game reps. Well, I've Michigan, never, Appalachian State is on the phone. Well, come on. There are upsets every week of the year. Right. That's not, I'm not, you're going to blame that. I mean, the other team played well. They sure did. That's all I'm saying. Like, you don't actually need to do this. Do we all agree? You don't actually have to do this to know how to play football. Trey Lance has already played in regular season games. But if Trey Lance doesn't play tonight, when you get to the opener on September 11th, he won't have played for about three weeks. And we talk about rest versus rust when we get into the playoffs, that's you know. almost three weeks anyway. It's rust. Even, even no. if he does play tonight, that's three. That's, that's almost four three. days less. <laughs> it's not. It, it's different. Okay. It, no, okay. it's absolutely different. And the fact that he's going to get real reps with pads on against a team that's out to try to stop him, not some, you know, candy apple. Oh, it's a it's a joint practice or it's a practice against our own defense and it's a controlled scrimmage. This is not controlled. This is real football. Ish. Yep. Ish, thank you. I think preseason games are pretty candy apple. Um, I but think it's pretty less vanilla. less candy apple than a joint practice yeah. or playing against your own defense. So, again, that's why I call it a cost-benefit analysis. I'm not saying there's zero redeeming qualities to play. Right. I'm saying it's not worth it. I'm saying going out there for nine plays has less of a positive effect on your 17 weeks ahead than the negative risk that you're taking to do it. That's my opinion. Yeah, it's your opinion, and the head coach who's paid to have a more well-founded opinion oh. thinks differently. Okay. I mean, it's his job. So can I use that every time you don't like a play call this year? Uh, absolutely. He's paid, he's paid to know, so you don't get to have your opinion no, on that. No, we get to have an opinion. Okay. You get to have your opinion, but he is paid to make these decisions. Yes, he is. Much, much like, you know... Farhan in Farhan we trust mm -hmm. because you know it's his job to build the roster the way he thinks he should build it and Gabe Kapler in the spreadsheet 
He's supposed to make the calls that he makes. Those are his, I mean, that's their job. So ultimately, yes, we can criticize it, but it's it's their job to make, and it's their call to make. Yep. And for Kyle Shanahan, the same thing. Now, if something bad should potentially happen, then Kyle Shanahan's going to be the one who has to, to bear the, the brunt. And you. Of course. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Because I'm glad he's out there. Yeah. No, look. And if Trey Lance goes out in the first week and lights up Chicago, then I get the credit. No. no I'm sorry. That doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way at all. But in the end, the ground running. in the end, he is certainly on the very short list of things we'd be interested to see tonight. True. There are others as well. We'll get to that. We'd love to hear from you. What are you looking for tonight? 888-957-9570. That's the number. That's also our Comcast business text line. Hello, Twitch and YouTube. We'll get your comments going. Thank you for being with us and watching. We appreciate it. John McClain, Yippee Kaye, mother... Mm, don't you say that. <laughs> I is, thought you were. No, he's coming up at 10 o'clock. No, no, don't talk about that. Pavlovich <laughs> is on today. Cleared to play today. Uh, let's hang out for a bit, shall we? It's Willard and Debs on 95.7 The Game. The final preseason game is tonight. The sideline and it's caught. Debo Samuel with the catch and trying to turn on the Jets. And we reacting all day tomorrow to the good, the bad, and the ugly. He'll take it all the way for the touchdown. This is the Bay Area's sports station. Yay. 95-7 the game. You put it in your mouth and you chew it up real good. I know how to chew gum, Dad. Hurry up. We got Gosh. leaks to fix. What are you two up to? We're fixing our leaky pipes. Yeah. With gum? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a hack, Mom. A what? A hack. You know. A do-it-yourself trick. No. The trick to fixing leaks and low water pressure is calling repipe specialists. You mean professionals? I mean, repipe specialists can repipe our whole house in one to two days. Fix the leaks and low water pressure, repair the holes in the walls if we want, and they guarantee their work for life. Got leaks or low water pressure? Call the professionals at repipe specialists. Specialists and in one to two days, they can repipe your whole house with new PEX tubing. With over 60,000 repipes completed, that's their specialty. You really stepped in Ew. it. I was just being. The gum, Dad. You what? stepped in the gum. The gum. Oh, great. Call 800 217 1636 for a free in home estimate and ask about their 0% financing options. That's 800 217 1636. Call today, 800-217-1636, or visit repipe.com. Are you ready for your palm reading, my dear? Yeah, let's do this. I sense that you crave something. More reliable. Right. You know you deserve better and want out of a relationship. Yes, with my big-name wireless carrier. You're who now? My big-name wireless carrier. That's why I switched to Xfinity Mobile. Now I get unlimited with 5G for $30 per month on the most reliable 5G network. Let's talk about your aura. It's so... And get this. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Yep, but you already knew that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I definitely saw this coming. Start seeing savings today. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of unlimited, just $30 a line per month. Switch today. Xfinity Internet required. Price comparison for two unlimited lines under available 5G pricing plans of top three carriers. Taxes and fees extra. Reduced speeds up to 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Most reliable based on root metrics. US report. Comcast analysis of mobile Wi-Fi and cellular data from Ookla Speed Test Intelligence Q2 2022. Kansas City State Company. Another AmericanEagle.com success story. Started in 1932 as a family-owned butcher shop. Today, they're a leading distributor of superior all-American steaks delivered right to your door, ready for the grill and your taste buds. When it came to their website, an average site wouldn't do. They chose AmericanEagle.com to take their website site to the next level. With a dramatic increase in competition and a softening market demand, they had two challenges. Improve their brand presence and message and produce a positive return. AmericanEagle.com got to work and executed usability studies and detailed audits of site experience, digital assets, and marketing. The result? An integrated digital marketing and customer experience plan, organic traffic increase of 20%, and a long-term roadmap for success. If you love great steaks, go to KansasCitySteaks.com for website design, development, and online solutions that bring efficiency and results visit americaneagle.com 
If you need a results-driven website, call the team at AmericanEagle.com at 877-WEBNOW-1. That's 877-WEBNOW-1. Kirby is your driveway mechanic. They bring the shop to you with brake and tire replacements, oil changes, and much more. It's the ultimate convenience. Easy booking, transparent pricing, on-time arrivals, and service right in your driveway. No waiting rooms and direct access to your mechanic with friendly and reliable service. No middleman or upsells. They're so sure you'll love the convenience. Take $50 off your first oil change with code OIL50 at Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E dot com and use code OIL50. Kirby, your driveway mechanic. In order for small businesses to thrive, they need to be smart, efficient, agile, staying ahead of the market at every turn, and finding ways to do more with less. That's never been more important than it is right now. So for a limited time, Comcast Business is introducing small business savings, a deal for companies across the country. When you call in now, you can get powerful internet for just $39 a month for 12 months. $39 a month with no annual contract and a money-back guarantee. All on the largest, fastest, reliable network for small businesses with the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. So if you're a small business owner, don't wait. Call and get started today. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Offer ends 921-22. Restrictions apply. New Comcast Business 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Requires EcoBill and AutoPay. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. Call or go online for details. After promo, regular rates apply. Okay, you know those amazing spots only the true San Francisco locals are in on? Like square pizza. That place with the square pizzas? Or Mama Hoo Hoo? The spot for sweet and sour chicken that's anything but so-so. Oh, or order up! You know, with the Granch dressing. And all the other spots the real SF locals know without us even saying them. Yeah, they're on DoorDash. San Francisco gets it. DoorDash has it. Dealing with an outdated printer that just can't keep up with you? Visit Staples and upgrade to a new HP Envy Inspire with HP Plus, HP's best home printer. And it comes with six months of free ink. It prints everything you need, from homework and work documents to incredible photos and more with amazing quality. Right now, save $70 on the HP Envy Inspire 7955E, available at Staples. Offer valid through August 27th. See staples.com slash HP Plus for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly! When was the last time you changed your spark plugs? Replacing your spark plugs can restore the efficiency and performance of your vehicle. Stop by and get a $12 O'Reilly Auto Parts gift card after mail-in rebate when you purchase four or more select Iridium spark plugs. Get better performance with new spark plugs from your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly! Auto Parts. You might not have the biggest garage on the block, but with eBay Motors, there's 122 million parts right at your fingertips. Whatever you need is something that fits your vehicle. Air filters, tires, seat covers, and more. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Okay, take a listen. So this is Amazon Prime's NFL theme. It felt a little Star Wars ish at the at the jump. Yeah, right? Too busy. Right? Too busy. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's a lot of different directions. Like you, you I, the only thing I'd say, I mean, and well, I like quite frankly, part. I mean, we get in the groove and it's bah, bah, bah. it's nice listen, horns and a good beat. Yeah, but if I sit down on a couch with a beer and there's an NFL game that's about to start, you could play Let It Go by the wickedly talented Adele Dazeem, and I'm going to be fired up. So, like, very easy audience. Cold Pretty never talented. bothered you anyway. But, but, but Adele does when even. it comes to beer, you're damn right. But anyway, <laughs> like, you want that. Sort of memorable one line, you know, Monday Night Football. Bah, 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 bah. Tennis, right? Tennis. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then even is it Sunday night? Da, 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 bah. Yeah, da, 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 da. It's really like, good. Right? I didn't catch anything in there that I'm gonna be like, okay, here's Thursday night's Amazon. Can it's- you rack it back, Spadone? Just the first, like, you know, <laughs> I can name that, that tune in uh, in eight notes. Can we get the opening couple of bars here? Fan, 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 fan. 
I like the horns, but I feel like... I don't know. Nah, nah. Do I have a fantasy starter in this game or not? I, I'm, I like... The, the Texans and the Titans, Thursday <laughs> night football. Da- Damian Pierce. Go that, ahead, Kyle. That sounds like Florida legend Damian Pierce. Thank you. The This sounds mm-hmm. like the intro music for a podcast <laughs> about the MCU where they don't <laughs> have the rights the to use the MCU music. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're, at the, we're, we're let's go live inside the college radio station where Billy, who has big aspirations, is about to take the mic. I didn't like Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's funny right there. All right, so there it is. That's uh, Amazon Prime. and then, Hopefully it grows on right. us, but, <laughs> no, you know. And, and, and everybody over, what, 65 is never going to hear that theme because that will come on while you're trying to find how the hell to find the game. Amazon? What the hell is that? It, oh, it's on Apple. Is it Amazon being Apple? in Africa? <laughs> it's in the Amazon? What? Oh. It's the best. It's I got really a lot of that going on. Uh, living with the uh, <laughs> the fulfill and the famil, the future father in law, the future mother in law. Yeah. There's some, uh, you know, there, there's some different uh, uh, sure, interactivity. Sure, sure. You haven't cut the cord yet in there. Yeah, the cord and is. And I'm not talking yeah. about your baby. No, that's uh, coming up here in a, maybe a week and we can change. Good but luck, brother. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's some uh, interfacing. That's maybe not like what it is in other houses. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. We're still working through it. I would imagine. My parents have been yelling at each other for two. Tom, how do we get HBO Max? It's not on the DV. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. They literally, I think it was six months ago, they stopped getting Netflix DVDs in the mail. Six months really? ago. Really? I'm like, I didn't even know they still had that service. Remember? There's like, Remember four, that? There, are there like, there's are two people in some mailroom somewhere. They're like, well, we've got Tom and Ellen in Irvine, and then there's Bob in North Dakota, and so we'll be here until yeah. until they change their subscription. Maybe our very Adorable. own Kyle should be in on the Netflix oh. movie subscription because pre-show we uh, Kyle was kind enough to share his list of movies he hasn't seen. Yeah, and my God, he's I mean, got some work to do. Yeah, you yeah, got well, homework. Kyle well, Madsen. I mean, there's you want to talk about a spreadsheet? I mean, Gabe Kapler would grab this thing and be like, "Obviously, we've got some movies to watch." <laughs> yeah, there's some. I felt I've always felt bad because my big thing was Godfather. I've seen it, but I've seen it in pieces. Like, oh, you're watching about 20 minutes over here, and then you, I've never sat down and gone from beginning to end with Godfather. And you've never seen and it. And therefore, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed by that. But yeah. then I looked at this list, and not only does it have all the Godfathers, I mean Shawshank, and Usual Suspects, and A Few Good Men, and Stand By Me, and The Fugitive, and Groundhog Day, and Ferris Bueller. I made the Bueller joke the other day because of Walker Bueller, and right. I literally said in the email, I go, if you don't get this joke... I, I, I'm not coming in tomorrow. I'm out. I don't know what to do if you don't. Bueller, Bueller. I get, you the, don't, I get you the joke. Do you? Yes. Explain it. It's the teacher, and Ferris Bueller is zoning out, and the teacher is just going, Bueller. Like he's, Bueller. he's doing roll yeah. call. Right. Right. Okay. So you have seen something I from know Ferris that. Bueller's. I know that. Day reference. off. All right. Thank you very much. Um, ben Stein. Yeah. Goodfellas, Spaceballs, mm-hmm. Seven. Unbelievable. We've got work to do. Uh, what but I've you- seen Blazing Saddles like a lot of times. <laughs> good, good. That th- and that's why I like yeah. you. Uh, so- Doesn't really play today, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say no, this. No, don't talk about that. Pat McAfee just said about a half hour ago that Trey Lance is playing the whole half tonight. The whole first half. You which, damn right he well, is. Well, Cal Shanahan said publicly yesterday two series. So I don't know why or what Pat would know that Kyle Shanahan, who actually is making the decisions, <laughs> does. I don't know where that comes from, but we'll see. That's what he thinks. So I think he was reading probably where Shanahan said on, was it Monday? He was like, haven't decided, but no more than a half. No more than a half. Okay. Was basically what he said. Yesterday, so my guess is yeah. McAfee was just reading off like, it wasn't like he's like, I heard. So let me take something good out of this because you made the point, remember going into the Minnesota game and you were like, if Trey Lance does play, you were going to be terrified. You 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 thought Kyle that this was that was going to be a really bad sign because the original plan was don't play in the second game and if he does that means Kyle Shanahan is seeing something that's not right 
and and they need to go work it out. Yeah, in and, practice. Right. And exactly. so they did not they did not play in, in the Minnesota game. And then in this one, if the thought was no more than a half, and now it's all the way down to we're just gonna do two series. I mean, that says to me that Kyle must be feeling pretty comfortable with what he's seeing right now. It just depends on what those series look like. If it's three and out, punt, three and out, punt, he's going to get more than two series. That's fair. I think it it comes down to more in terms of how many plays do you want Trey Lance to play? What do you want those series to look like? If the opening series is 11 plays, 78 yards, and a touchdown, great. The next series is a three and out. I believe that'll that probably will be done, or maybe he'll come out for a third series. If it goes the other way, three and out, okay, you punt it. The next series, you go 11 plays, 81 yards, and a touchdown. At that point, that might be it, but maybe he gets a third series. If he goes long touchdown drive, long touchdown drive, then yeah, two series is all he's going to get. Uh, i tell you what I really want to see tonight from Trey Lance. I would love to see him hand off. That's what I would love to see him do. Um, because if what you are really trying to do is just run the function of this offense, what are we actually really interested in tonight as 49er fans? Sure, always Trey Lance. Anything Trey for a while is going to be very interesting. For the whole year. Good or bad. Absolutely. But there is actually um, another race that I have now really gotten into, which is the running back room. And how this is going to get figured out by next Tuesday, Eli Mitchell is injured and the starter. So we know that. Jeff Wilson is going to start the game tonight. That's been announced. So cool. We also know he's on the team. And TDP is in just because he's a rook and and a somewhat high draft pick. So he's on the team. So what that leaves is obviously Trey Sermon, Jermichael Hasty, and Jordan Mason But we also don't technically know how many spots those three guys are going for. We know they're not all going to be in, but are there two roster spots or only one roster spot that those three guys are going for? That we won't know till Tuesday, but sign me up for what those guys look like throughout the game because in theory, you know, Mason and Hasty, maybe even Sermon, they definitely go into the second half tonight. And and so I'm very interested to get another look at those three now that we know that the race is sort of uh, materialized. And it's interesting for me in terms of how much they play because if Jordan Mason doesn't play much, I think that bodes well for him to mm-hmm. be kept. Mm-hmm. You know, because I, I think you want to maybe hide Jordan Mason. And Kyle's right. He said it yesterday that, you know, they're probably... If even if they cut Jordan Mason, there aren't going to be that many teams clamoring to pick him up. He's the only one who could make it through waivers. That's for right, sure. Right. Sermon and, and Hasty would not make it through. Hasty, I think, is going to be kept. He is too valuable as a third down back. If he's Hasty, the best pass catcher of the three. And I know this Kyle, this was his prediction that we talked about yesterday. If Hasty's going to be kept, uh, the race may well be over. That may be it. I mean, right. the Sermon and Mason mo- bo- both may get cut. Next I believe Tuesday. they both will yeah, be cut. It's possible. And I think that Trey Sermon gets cut, and the team just admits, quote unquote, that it was a, a mistake, at least for them, in terms of drafting him. And if he gets picked up, I don't think you're afraid that he comes out and he rushes for a thousand yards for someone else this year. And Trey Sermon's a guy who might get picked up. He might not. Jordan Mason's a guy. I think that. You don't showcase, and then you hope that you can cut him and get him back. Yeah, Kyle, what's up? Shout out to the coaching staff if Trey Sermon gets released. Shout out to the coaching staff that's like, Kyle Shanahan didn't know what he was doing. Well, Let me get that Okay, back. this is a great point because what I was simply just thinking is not so much about, because coaches always are like, hey, come on, let's get our hands on him and see what we can do with him. What does it say about the running back that can't produce under Kyle? Yikes. Yikes. I mean, anyone with the last name... It just depends on what kind of a running back you are. I guess, but the the last name Shannon, Shanahan for years in the NFL has been synonymous with getting production out of almost anyone in the backfield. Turning undrafted free agents into thousand-yard backs. I mean, they've done... No, right. I mean, but he couldn't play, and he never latched on anywhere else either. Right. But if you go all the way through Mike and then even Kyle from... You know, Terrell Davis to Orlandis Gary to Raheem Mostert. Like, this is what they do. They get 
unbelievable production out of guys you didn't see coming. So if you're a running back and, and you can't get it going under Kyle Shanahan in this system, huge red flag, obviously. Yes, unless you are the kind of running back who doesn't do well in the zone scheme. And if that's the case, if Trey Sermon goes and gets picked up somewhere else and he is at least a part of their rotation and he makes their team and he looks like he might be a guy, well, then it's on Shanahan for misidentifying mm. or miscoaching a guy who they thought could work in their system and then didn't. I don't know if Trey Sermon will be that guy, and maybe he, he came in and he never got better, and Kyle, our Kyle, talks about how he is a one-contact-and-down guy right. where he doesn't fight through tackles, and he doesn't, he doesn't hit the hole hard. He doesn't run downhill. The one thing we know about Matt Breida and Raheem Mostert, they are incredibly fast, and as a result, they're one cut and gone, and that's why they work in the system. Yeah. I also think not making this running back room doesn't automatically mean you stink. It, I mean, it just may mean, well, no, we've actually got other guys who are doing it better. Just go back to last year. Trey Sermon and Eli Mitchell were both rookies, uh, but, but once they get in, we do this. I don't think teams do. The front office might, but a coach doesn't. Once they get in, it's not this one's a third rounder and that one's a sixth rounder. It's that one's Trey and that one's Eli. Right. Who's playing better? Eli. Okay, done. That's it. That's who we're going to get. We're going to get you're producing. It doesn't mean that the other guys stink. This looks like a very deep running back room with guys who have a lot of different uh, skills at, at, at the position. So just because if Trey Sermon is cut, and, and if he latches on with another team and he does have some success, but the 49ers are having great success with the guys they kept, I'm not going to come down. I'm like, okay, but like you had five guys who could produce and you you picked the four that you liked. I mean, that's that's the game. Right, but the game also is when we look back at drafts and we look back at the draft class and Trey Sermon, a third-round pick, if he doesn't make the team, and it turns out that this is his 49ers career, which is much ado about nothing, then that becomes a part of the critical piece as we look at Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch in terms of how they drafted. John McClain, forever a Houston Chronicle NFL national legend in the media world. He retired just last year from the Chronicle, but is still doing radio stuff five days a week in Houston. Knows the Texans and the NFL like no other. We love having him on. Um, gosh, once upon a time, Houston has been a rumored landing spot for Jimmy G. Davis Mills from Stanford is their guy. Um, and then just his thoughts on Trey Lance. How much is the right amount to play? We'll ask him all of that. Coming up at the top of the hour at 10 o'clock. Make sure you're with us for that. It's always a fun and interesting conversation. The other John McClain, not Bruce Willis. Uh, but I know you're very, very excited for, for today's What Are You Doing? So I guess we should ask, what are you, what are you doing? I should ask we you. The Tibbs have a lot to say. My only weapon was my mouth. But they just oh. have one big question. What are you doing, what are you right, doing now? right now? What are you doing I, right now? What are, what are you doing right now? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> we never do. No. In the end, we never do. And I need to ask you. Yeah, why don't you? you yeah. You right go, off the you top. First. And for you those of you first. not on YouTube and Twitch, you should get there because uh, our guy is rocking a a creamsicle, a City Connect Band-Aid, a bandage yeah. on your thumb. It's and Orange Thursday. You came in and you were very demure about it. You, you came in oh, like yeah. you always do. Yeah, like Fist I'm, bumps for everyone. It's not elementary school. I'm not trying to show everyone my Band-Aid. No, but it, it did get put on full display well, early I mean, and often. It's not like I can hide this thing. And it's I had to ask you, what are you doing, Mark? <laughs> Why is it that you have a jumbo-sized gauze wrap on your left thumb. Mark, what are you doing? Yeah, so this is a kitchen accident. Oh, this God. is a kitchen accident, but it's not just a kitchen accident. Uh, made some meatloaf last night. It was delicious. Mom! Yeah. The meatloaf! Mark! Meatloaf! 
Right, and and that's what happened because actually that was the vibe. Uh, I had car stuff going on yesterday. Had an appointment. It took a long time, so I'm like rushing home. Like, let's get the meatloaf going, and I'm hurrying a little bit, and I'm making the breadcrumbs. Making the breadcrumbs for from the meatloaf. scratch. Uh, you know, you take the bread out of the bag, and yeah, you rip it up, and yeah, I'm just kind of slicing and dicing and doing that, and making the breadcrumbs for uh, for the meatloaf. And I was hurrying, and uh, I got a little aggressive. And, and this was the result. But the beauty of Orange Thursday and the creamsicle thumb is a nod to the lovely Christy because this is what cuts look like when they happen at a woman's house. Like you get taken care of, right? right? There's gauze. Right? We've got orange wrap. It, it's just deep cut, but it's no big deal. It's not like no we're going to get stitches. No, we're not going to get stitches. Snitches but I mean, need stitches. Right? Like if, I, if this had happened at my house... I'd have come in here with with binder paper and a piece of scotch tape, <laughs> exactly. and I'd have been like, "Yeah, we're good here." And the, the the paper would have been turning red, and it'd be sticking to the thumb and all of that. But no, I have this beautiful, perfectly wrapped. It is perfect. I mean, it's healthy, it's safe, it's environmentally friendly, and go Giants! Like it's er, exactly. it's right, it's creamsicle. This is a City Connect thumb, and I'm here for it. So that's what we're doing. You could have just bought breadcrumbs, organic breadcrumbs, opened the package and put them right in the meat. I'm not one of these guys that just throws money at all of his problems, Dibs. That's not what I do. Okay? So, yeah, I could go buy some breadcrumbs or I could do it the way they used to do it, Dibs. From JB on YouTube. <laughs> make dude, your own. make your breadcrumbs in the food processor. No. Do you not have a food processor? Of course we got a food processor. Process that's that, bro. I mean, come on, man. What happened? to doing something with your hands do something with your hands in this life hey. i'm captain hire somebody for everything this You're is my captain thing save a giant <laughs> that too <laughs> this is my thing when you're in the kitchen and we're making food i got this be okay ca be, cap giant. be captain save a thumb thank and you. use a food process no, thank you no. own one brother it's in the house one for the thumb Plug it in. One for the thumb. You watch your mouth. This meatloaf. Meat, meatloaf was delicious. I got some leftovers in that major bag alert right now. And in about an hour, they're coming out. Y'all are going to be jealous. So, Coach, you're going to make meatloaf. I guess that means it's uh, there's, one for the thumb, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Coach, Actually, congratulations. Went vegan six I guess years ago. If things go your way, we'll see you back here. One for the thumb, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't need one. I only got four fingers, so I'm good. There you go. You're on your way to That's four me. fingers. That's me. That was me. That was me in that interview. We just never admitted it. What are you doing? I mean, oh, I need you healthy. I need you healthy with all ten. I'm ready, boss. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Giants and don't Twins this OC weekend. Yuri Let's on go. Me. Let's don't, go. We're ready. Don't come in with seven and no. a quarter. <laughs> just you hang Jason Pierre Paul. No, come totally. on, man. Uh, it's City Connect Thursday. Roll. It's never happened before. Straight hand? But today is the day. Here's my what are you doing. And it goes out to pro football talk zone Mike Florio, who was on with our morning show yesterday, and had this to say about the 49ers in the quarterback position. For as good as they've been, I mean, they would have won two or three Super Bowls by now if they had the quarterback position under control. And, and I just think this is the latest effort for them to clean up this mess they've made the past five years oh. in how they've handled the quarterback situation. And at some point, you just have to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, to Kyle Shanahan's credit, he has moved on from it. But they're still holding out hope for the possibility that lightning strikes somewhere and another team loses a starting quarterback, and they're going to suddenly be ready to give the 49ers what they want for Jimmy Garoppolo. And also, Garoppolo gets paid a lot more than what he would get if he eventually gets cut. That's why he's still on the roster. Okay, so the comment that got everybody going was that the 49ers have made a mess of the quarterback position for the last five years. They sure have, Mark. No success. I understand where you're coming from if you want to point out to the 2017 NFL draft and the 49ers passed on Patrick Mahomes and they passed on Deshaun Watson, dot, dot, dot. That might not have gone so well had they not. But anyway, and it's just... An unfair statement. I get I get where you're coming from, but if you got a guy, like this is where the disrespect at a certain point has to end. And it isn't just about Jimmy. It's also about the organization. Okay? It is not fair to put this kind of a thing on a team for the draft when 
even when they make mistakes, because every team does, you recover, get Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round pick, and make two of the next five NFC Championship games and have somebody waiting to call you a mess. Like, if you really want to call someone a mess over the last five years, how about all the other teams that passed on Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson? Mahomes was the 10th overall pick. Watson was the 12th. You want to know who else passed on him? It wasn't just the 49ers. How about the Bears, who actually wanted a quarterback, traded up to get Mitch Trubisky and haven't had a quarterback, oh, by the way, my whole life, <laughs> my whole life, <laughs> the Bears have right. never had a quarterback. Jim McMahon. The Jets were in that top 10. No quarterback. Carolina was in that top 10. No quarterback. Um, the, the, the Chargers took Mike Williams. Yes, they've got Justin Herbert now. Jacksonville was in that top 10. Oh, by the way, those teams are always in the top 10. Cleveland had the number one overall pick. You could say they nailed it with Miles Garrett. They end up with Deshaun Watson a few years later and are still working on the quarterback position. If you're going to point to someone for being a mess, it's got to be somebody else from the 2017 draft. Yes, it has to be. And you know how many quarterbacks over the last five years have been to two conference championship games? There are four guys who have been to two title games. Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Garoppolo. Those are your four. Jimmy Garoppolo. And, yeah. uh, you know, the Rams have been twice, but one was with Jared Goff, one was with Stafford, and, by the way, Tom Brady's been to uh, three or four of them. It's been a few. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with, with Tampa, with New England, it's Rodgers, Brady, Mahomes, and Garoppolo. That's it. Um, it's all brought to you by BMW Fairfield. Now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Provide a luxurious, all-encompassing experience to address all your BMW needs. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. It's BMWFairfield.com. We talk about all this and tonight's game in Houston with Houston with John McClain, longtime NFL writer and now radio personality in Houston. He joins us next on Willard and Dibs. Now with Xfinity, you'll get unlimited internet with gig speed and supersonic Wi-Fi. With a two-year internet rate guarantee, no annual contract required, and no equipment fees. Talk about knock your socks off. Ooh! Plus, a free Flex 4K streaming box. It's like hitting the streaming jackpot. It's all just 50 bucks a month when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. 50 bucks a month. A price that's truly jaw-dropping. Oh! Literally. The speed you need at a price you want. Value that's simply... Bananas. <laughs> That's the new Xfinity Supersonic Bundle. It's kind of a big deal. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store to learn more. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and autopay. New gigabit internet customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local, raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Breathe new life into life at home with IKEA Festival. Ten topics, one purpose, to get more out of the homes we love. What are you passionate about? Art, dance, music, food, fur babies. Get inspired, create, and share with us with celebrations, giveaways, IKEA family offers, and live streams with expert advice. It's all happening at IKEA Festival. Join us from August 26th through September 10th online or at your local IKEA store. Learn more at ikea-usa.com. It's easy to think all money managers are pretty much the same. But at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different? How? You sell high commission investment products, right? No. Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission-based investment products. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. 
Nope, never at Fisher. We're a fiduciary obligated to act in our client's best interest. It's the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. How do you know what's in their best interest? We get to know our clients and then tailor a portfolio based on their goals and needs. But you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No, we have one transparent management fee structured so we do better when our clients do better. Wow, you really do look out for your clients. That's because our top priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. It might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. Why do we find popping bubble wrap so satisfying? <laughs> why do we say boop when we touch somebody's nose? Boop? Why do we turn anything and everything into drums? Honey, I need those pots to start dinner. Why do we sing in the shower? I'm taking a shower. And outside the shower. This conference call is boring. Rick, you are not on mute. Why? For the same reason we play scratchers from the California Lottery. Because a little play can make your day. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase play or claim. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Dr. Christine Moutier. You know, we have this image that if a person is strong, is accomplished, or whatever the stereotype is, that somehow they'll be immune from a mental health problem, PTSD, or suicide. And the reality is that every single human being is exactly that. We're human. And we all have our physical health and we all have our mental health. More at imlistening.org. Talk saves lives. Venture X from Capital One is the travel card for people always asking, Where next? You earn 10x miles on hotels and rental cars, and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel, and 2x miles on everything else you buy with Venture X. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops, like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. Donate your car today at carsforkids.org. Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day. No title, no problem. Call eight seven seven cars for kids or go online at carsforkids.org to donate today. One eight seven seven cars for kids. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids. one 877 cars for kids Donate your car today. Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC-FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Now, back to Will and Dibby on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, it's about that time. We're gathering timber, Dibs. Is this about to go down? Yeah, it's going down. our game tonight. It's big. It's going down. down. We're gathering timber. I tell you what, uh, speaking of all these things that are going down, I mean, this guy, so good at his career for so long that as soon as he retired, what did he do? You know, Keep working. I mean, still still five days a week at multiple outlets, if I'm not, not mistaken, John McClain. Am I right? 11 shows a week in five cities, five times a week on the Texans uh, flagship, two podcasts a week on the Texans fl- flagship, three writings a week on the Texans flagship. And next <laughs> Tuesday, I'm gonna be, it's going to be announced at a press conference that I've been hired as an NFL writer 
for three columns a week at a podcast on a new website in Houston. So the next time I talk to you guys, I can tell you what that is. How so I you... retired from the Chronicles, yeah. I collect my pension. Right. And I was never able to do endorsements for radio. Turned down so many through the years, and now I can do all the endorsements that people want me to do. I feel like we should be sending you a Boom. check and adding us to your list of 1099s. Uh, is your accountant working overtime trying to keep all this straight? I don't know. That's my wife. I have no clue what she does. <laughs> she could have an offshore account somewhere. I have no idea about it. <laughs> Follow the money. <laughs> sounds like most American families I know. Just tell me where the money is if I need something. That's pretty much it. Uh, John... We've been having a conversation that's actually kind of developed for about three days now out here, which is how much should Trey Lance play? Should he play at all? It seems like a trend, and I know it's it's more with the experienced guys, but I wonder if it will bleed over the next five years, ten years, in terms of how teams handle the preseason. What do you think is the right thing to do for Trey Lance and Kyle Shanahan tonight? Well, first of all, I put my trust in Kyle because he's been in the NFL since he got out of the University of Texas. And um, when I started covering the NFL in 77, there were six preseason exhibition games, they called them. And the starters wouldn't play in the first one. They'd play a quarter in the second one, two quarters in the third one, about a half in the fourth one, three quarters in the fifth one. And the last one, they'd go full game mode because they didn't have time off. They started on Labor Day. So the next week, they were playing. And ever since the salary cap was implemented, people have handled it differently. And also, considering the fact players work out all year round, they got great facilities. Back then, when I'm talking about, the Oilers might have had two dumbbells and maybe one bench press. And so everybody ran. They ran and did calisthenics like in the military. They didn't lift a lot. and But now, because they can be there all year round, they give them three meals every day. They have every kind of rehab. And uh, they, if you want massages, you can get them. If you want 66, you can get them away from the team. But they're there for whatever players want today. And so I don't think you need to play a lot in preseason. Like you guys will see Davis Mills and the Texans first team off. It's the first time they've all been on the field at the same time. Because uh, Davis Mills does not look good in preseason. They need him to look good because they're trying to decide, is he going to take the next step from where he ended last year and be their quarterback? If that's the case, they can use their 11 draft choices, including two number one picks on position players, like they did this year, cornerback Derek Stingley, left guard Kenyon Green, first round uh, safety Jalen Petrie in the second round. They're all going to be starters. And... um if they can't, and if he doesn't take that next step, then Nick Casario, the GM, is going to have to package a lot of those picks and move up to try to get a quarterback like Ohio State C.J. Stroud unless they're bad enough to get the first overall pick. Nick Casario obviously has a linkage to Jimmy Garoppolo. We thought out here as we're looking for Jimmy Garoppolo's next team that maybe Houston would be the destination. That doesn't seem likely now. Where do you think Jimmy Garoppolo will end up if the Niners do cut him as expected in five days? First of all, Jimmy Garoppolo was never coming here, ever. And uh, those reports, the national reports, were wrong. And uh, the only way they would be interested in him here if, say, Davis Mills suffered a season-ending injury. And because uh, if you had Jimmy G here, first time Mills throws an interception, a lot of fans would be saying, well, Garoppolo led the 49ers to the Super Bowl, which, as you guys know, is not exactly the case. And it's not what you need for a young quarterback trying to develop. You need clear lines drawn between first and second. So I've never understood. I did not understand why uh Cleveland was not interested in Jimmy G, knowing that Watson was going to be gone a long time. And I and I'm sure you guys are as flummoxed as I am <laughs> and everybody else is at the Seahawks going with Geno Smith and uh Drew Locke, even though they got Metcalf and Lockett at wide receiver, Fant at tight end, those guys are good. 
They've got two running backs, Rashad Penny. He was six, he was second rushing over the last six games to Jonathan Taylor. They draft Kenneth Walker the third. They draft Charles Cross to play left tackle. Then they drafted another tackle in the third round. Let Dwayne Brown go. Their skill position players are really good except for one glaring weakness. And maybe Pete Carroll is seeing what Jig Vermeil saw when he didn't replace Trent Green with a guy on a trade, he elevated this nobody named Kurt Warner. So maybe that's what what Pete Carroll thinks he's going to do. But does anybody think Geno Smith or Drew Locke are good enough to take advantage of all the talent they got at the skill positions? So maybe Jimmy G gets cut so they don't have to guarantee his contract. And Seattle reaches out and looks like a genius. Yeah, I, I mean, I think your read is kind it's of what, take. what our read has been at least over the last handful of days. And and if that is the case, is is that your belief in terms of why it's still going? Like the 49ers, and there was a report here just a couple of days ago that within the 49er walls, they think he's going to end up in Seattle. So is that why this is getting so drawn out? The 49ers are saying, we're going to keep you away from Seattle as long as humanly possible, and then we'll let you go and Seattle will pick you up the next day. Do you think that's the most likely well, scenario it here? Could be, Mark. It could be, but on the other hand, you know the Niners would like to get a pick, even if it's a pick like the Browns got for Baker Mayfield. Obviously, Garoppolo would have to have his contract redone. He'd take a pay cut. He's not worth where he's getting paid, and a new, new team would give him a chance to make that money back in incentives of the way Watson has a chance to do it. but And I'd be leery of trading Garoppolo unless I saw him play in preseason. He could throw the ball. I don't care what the Niners say. Oh, yeah, his arm's great. He can throw. When you have surgery like he did, you're not going to make a trade for him without being able to see him throw the ball. And they don't let veterans go around the country doing tryouts at this time of the year. So all I can think of, if he's cut, then he'll have to go work out and prove that he can throw the way he did before the surgery. So what do you think the likelihood is in terms of a ramp-up for Jimmy Garoppolo, knowing he won't play in the preseason, and preseason's going to end here in a few days, and then still another week and a half till the regular season starts. Is it going to take about a month until Jimmy Garoppolo is able to find a team, get ramped up, and then maybe theoretically appear? That sounds about right. He's certainly not going to be thrown to the wolves especially when he doesn't know the system, doesn't know the coaches. Maybe he'll go somewhere that plays a system system similar to what Kyle Shanahan plays. But, you know, somebody could get hurt between now and then. They'd love to be able to get a pick, but I just, if somebody hadn't given them a pick yet, unless somebody has a serious injury in his third game to a quarterback, I just don't see it happening. And if I'm the Browns, I know Garoppolo wouldn't want to go there and back up Jacoby Brissett. But what are the odds Brissett's going to start all 11 games? And I would rather have Jimmy G on my roster than Joshua Dobbs because the Browns still think because of great running game and great defense, you know, they still think, especially with an easy schedule starting off, that they're going to be able to be in the playoff race when Watson comes back. But just because Watson's coming back against a bad team in Houston doesn't mean he's going to be ready to play. You know, you think about how long it's been since he's actually played. And after Houston, it's December games. All of them are outdoors. Weather could be terrible, including two in Cleveland. So I think he's going to have trouble when he comes back. And I think that the best you'll see from him will be in 2023 because of circumstances. Another thing about Watson, he's never had any negativity in his career. Mm. Now he's going to have it everywhere he goes. When he comes back here, there's going to be booze. There's going to be three word, three worded chant, chants. Mm. There's going to be protests outside with women. It's going to be a circus, national media all over the country. But if I'm the Browns, I think I'm going to be, can stay in the race. I want a proven backup quarterback who may be the starter if Brissette is inept or injured. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you. John McClain, Sports Radio 610 in Houston with us here. Willard and Dibbs, 95.7 The Game. Hey, I want to ask you uh, a, a little bit of an intricate thing with fantasy drafts coming up for a lot of people this weekend. We keep hearing about this kid, Damian Pierce, 
who's supposed to just take over the Texans' backfield this year. John, what do you know? He was a fourth-round pick from Florida. He rotated with in the backfield at Florida last year, and every Florida alum I know, and I know a lot, that watch all their game, was infuriated with the coaching staff. And I said, well, the Texans, thank you. He wasn't like Kenneth Walker the third, and he's getting 350 carries. So he comes in, he starts off third or fourth, but every time we see him in camp, he's making quick cuts, and they didn't hit back then. He played in the first game against New Orleans, and he averaged almost nine yards carry without the benefit of a long run. And they held him out of the last one. I think you'll see him tonight get some carries with the first team. He's still listed second team with Marlon Mack, who hadn't done squat since 2019 because of injuries. But I've said all along, I thought Pierce, because of opportunity, the worst running game in NFL history, the, I'm sorry, the worst in Texans history, the worst in the NFL, 31st year before, he has a great opportunity. The key is, can his offensive line, it's been awful at run blocking the last two years, improve with two new starters at guard? John, you've got a great retirement fund. We know that in about 17 <laughs> jobs. If you were to take a piece of your retirement fund and bet it on the Super Bowl winner, who would you bet on? Well, I certainly wouldn't bet on Green Bay because they've proved they can't they can have home field advantage and not get to the Super Bowl since two thousand ten. I don't think the the Bucks with all their interior line problems plus mass senior quarterback. And I don't <laughs> think anybody from the NFC East, the NFC West, uh, you know, it's 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 balanced. But uh, I can't go against Buffalo. Everybody's going with Buffalo. I hope for the Buffalo fans who suffered for those four consecutive losses. I don't care about the players or the coaches, but I hope for the loyal Buffalo fans that Buffalo can finally win its first Super Bowl. Uh, John, it is so great to hear your voice again, and uh, I hope you are enjoying air quotes retirement <laughs> air and I'm quotes. glad I'm glad you're still doing so much so that we can keep calling you all the time. You guys call me anytime. Thank you very much as always. Good luck to the Niners and Lance and Shanahan and all those former Texans employees who are in that organization. Right. <laughs> Especially D'Amico Ryans because it's going to be your last year with D'Amico so you better enjoy it. Yeah, that, that's yeah, a really good you, point. Yeah, John, thank you so much. The best. Yeah, he's probably right. I mean, if the I, I hadn't even thought of that. If the 49er defense does what we all think it can do, Richard Sherman is on Twitter two weeks ago going, where do you see this secondary? And it sort of got quiet because Mosley and Ward both got hurt and the other Ward too. And so it got quiet. But if they can stay healthy, and I'm talking about Charvarius, not Jimmy. Jimmy may miss the first game of the year. But those corners, I think, I mean, you already know what you're getting out of the pass rush. Right. If, 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 if Fred Warner behind you, Al Shire, I mean, Greenlaw, these guys, it is going to be a really good defense. And if it is... Yeah, gone. D'Amico's gone. Yeah. He's going like to be Robert he's, Sala was he's gone. Gonna, right. He's going to be the guy next year. Right. So, and that's what you want when you're a successful, healthy franchise. Your assistant coaches get jobs elsewhere, and the guys below matriculate up. That means you're doing well. That means you're winning. And the best way to have a good secondary, by the way, is to have a good pass rush. So, if you're one of the various wards in the back, Charvarius, Jimmy, etc., you are loving this interior and the exterior defensive line knowing that if they get after opposing QBs your job is made much easier. Oh well we and we saw that the year that the 49ers only had two interceptions and then they came back the very next year and Nick Bosa was a rookie and 49ers ended up in the Super Bowl. Right. So it was like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden, the, the same, same guys, yeah, the exact right. same guys are picking balls off right and left. So you're absolutely right. And I'm super excited about what the defense can do. All the questions are on the other side of the ball. And it's not just the obvious one of who is Trey Lance and what he is going to be, but uh, a lot of that is going to be connected to what's right in front of him as well, which yeah. is another thing that I'm... Re and by the way, we talk so much about the running backs, I don't really have any concerns that they're going to produce. Whoever it is, they will get production from those guys and multiple, probably at least three. I'd stick the over under at two and a half and probably take the over in terms of number of running backs who will start a game for the 49ers this year. Um, I, I'll, I'll take the over. They'll get production there. 
I am so high on this team going very far if the offensive line blocks. Right. That's it. That's literally the one thing I'm asking for this year. But even if the blocking is average, this is where Kyle Shanahan in his laminated spreadsheet, his laminated play sheet, that's where you need to lean on his expertise because if you realize that your interior three, Burford and Brendel and Banks, the killer bees, if they're not killer bees, if they're lowercase bees, well, now you have to figure out a way to run to the perimeter you have to be able to run outside the tackle use misdirection use the jet sweep end around reverses double reverses all the rest of the trickeration in order to still be able to run the ball really cool article by eric branch by the way on this kid jason poe who's really tracking toward making the team as an offensive lineman he's an undersized guy but they got trent williams talking all about him at a press conference the other day uh, which already kind of tells you that he's going to make the team Trent knows. Trent knows what's going on. And, and, and sort of this interesting thought slash question comes up. Like, yet another undrafted free agent fine by the 49ers. That's something where a front office deserves a whole lot of credit. But if this guy ends up outplaying Aaron Banks, if he outplays a second-round draft pick, but the front office found both of them, right? You use second-round capital on a guy, but you also get credit for grabbing the undrafted guy, and then he outproduces. Is that criticism worthy or is that a high five? Is it somewhere in between? What do you think about that? It's criticism worthy. It is. Because ultimately you wasted a second round pick on a guy. That to me is is criticism worthy more so than finding an undrafted free agent because that that's what you're supposed to do. If you're a good front office, you find these guys. That's great. And I'm not going to say that... You know, they should be, you know, given demerits for finding a guy. They've done a great job yeah. of that. But when you burn a second round pick on a guy who can't start for you, and we go back to Reuben Foster and Solomon Thomas, first round guys, and now Trey Sermon, a third round guy. Why don't you be like the Rams? Just give up all your draft picks and just find undrafted free <laughs> well, agents. Because I do because I think that's short term game, long term loss. I really do. I, I, it can you know, be. And I know um, I, I tried to beat this drum last year, and, and, and I took the L uh, because the Rams won the Super Bowl, which is the goal, obviously. Right. And you do that, you're going to get a lot of slack and a lot of rope for a long time. But if you keep giving up on the draft and you keep restructuring everyone's contract and you keep bringing in every time there's a big name available, Jalen Ramsey and Odell Beckham, and you just, yep, 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 you just keep I do feel like that's going to get you at some point. And as a fan, I would almost rather, I would almost rather what we've watched the 49ers do the last three years, which is you're right there. You're right there, and I want you right there every year. When you're provided health, I want you to have a shot every year. And over a nine-year period, you break through, you know, a you hope that you break through for at least one but compete and be right there every year as opposed to we got one super bowl and then it crumbled and we're terrible which i'm not saying necessarily the rams the rams are not going to do that yet but they might in two years when stafford's just about done you're going to have to reboot that whole thing. They might, but if they you look might. at the last five we'll years, see. the Rams have two Super Bowl berths and one yep. chip. And they won. The Niners have one Super Bowl berth and no chip. So right now, I mean, you can say... Advantage it Rams. Might, it, it might, no doubt. It, it might crumble, but so far it's not going to crumble. And the other part of that is, if the Niners are going to draft this poorly at the top of the, the first three rounds, and they haven't been that poor, but... If Banks is a miss and Sermon's a miss, Solomon Thomas is a miss, Ruben, Ruben Foster's Foster. a miss. Sure. I mean, they've had some hits. You know, Debo is a Bosa, hit. Debo. Nick yeah. Bosa's on the Hall of Fame track and Trey Lance, we don't yet know. So it's been a mixed bag, but the Rams' approach of F the first round has so far netted them two Super Bowl appearances and one title. Um, 888-957-9570 on this. Adam in San Francisco. You're on with uh, Willie and Dibby. Uh, <laughs> hi, Adam. What are you doing? Uh, just heading back home uh, to Coal Valley. Okay. Be safe. Love Coal Valley. 
Yes. What, what, what's your favorite spot about Coal Valley, Dez? I'd love to know. Uh, it used to be Saver. I don't know if it's still there. A little breakfast spot right there. I, I think it's on Coal itself. Okay. A little outdoor uh, garden. I, I don't, I'm not sure about... Oh, that's Dazzy's now. Oh, Okay. Okay, it's been a minute. It's been about a kid and a half since I've been there. But, uh, <laughs> All right. All I right. lived in the city in the uh, early uh, OOs. We used to go down there for brunch on the weekends. You, you should still go down there once the, once the kid is born. It's a good family area. Um, really quickly, what you guys were talking about in the sense of, like, you know, is the front office to blame if they could find undrafted guys, but they miss on some. And the thing that I, I'm hoping Aaron Banks pans out because, you know, obviously he didn't play last year. I, I thought I heard some good things coming out of camp, but let's see how he actually performs in a game. But I think it's that fault of the front office that, you know, especially that draft, right, where they drafted Aaron Banks in the second round when Asante Samuel Jr. was there. He's looked very good early on for the Chargers. Um, and then, obviously, Trey Sermon, it's like, it, it sounds like he's going towards the exit of be, or towards the route of being cut when he was so good at Ohio State. I kind of compare him to Carlos Hyde. A couple good years. I mean, he had one good year with the Niners, but it's just kind of a bust. So, I guess asking your guys' opinion, with the with the people that they have found like Kittle and Warner, does that alleviate them from the blame of you know a Solomon Thomas? And a, you know, I I don't want to say Aaron Banks is bad yet because we don't know. Yeah, we're not there. That's a good call. Yeah, Adam, I appreciate it. I mean, it it is interesting. I mean, in the end. If you are entering a draft, and I do as a fan, if you're entering a draft thinking, okay, some of these are going to be misses, what, what, what you need is, is some hits. And, and yes, it does feel weird. I don't think that these numbers bear out exactly the way we feel it, but it feels like the Niners have had more misses in rounds one and two than they have in five and six. Like, look at this roster right. from Warner to Greenlaw to Kittle to Eli Mitchell, what they found late, add in the undrafted guys, and you're like, man, why don't you guys just show up at the fourth round and start then? I think there have been plenty of guys fourth round and on who have not panned out as well. Right. But I get the way it feels. I don't know. Um, it's not ideal. You end up paying money for guys that you're getting nothing out of. Uh, you'd love to have a great batting average early. But in the end, if you're coming out of the, every draft – with two, three, four players who really have an impact, that's, I mean, that's the Doesn't goal. Doesn't matter where you draft I them. guess. I that, guess. It's a know. little, maybe a little wasteful financially, I guess, because you do throw some guaranteed money at these guys who then yeah. don't work out. But and it's also tantalizing to think about, like, second round picks that don't pan out, like Dante Pettis in 2018, yep, yep. second round wide receiver, and you think about what might have been, but then you look at the third round in that same draft. Fred Warner. Okay, mm -hmm. if Fred Warner was the second-round pick and Dante Pettis was the third-round pick You'd in that draft, better. we would feel better. But you, but the net result is the same. Exactly. The yeah. net result is that you had a wide receiver who couldn't play, and you have a, a linebacker who is a pro bowler and maybe a 10-year 49er in the making. And the next year, Jalen Hurd is your third-round pick. And Jalen Hurd was unable to ever get on the field, and Dre Greenlaw was your fifth-round pick. So if Greenlaw was your third-round pick <laughs> and Jalen right. Hurd was right. your fifth-round pick, would you feel better about it? Yes, you would, but the net result is you have Greenlaw and you don't have Hurd. And, and you can play that game all the way through every single draft, and, and that's you know kind of to your point. But for me, it's just a little bit tantalizing when you have these picks that don't work out oh, no high, doubt, no doubt. but you're undrafted and your late round guys do work out, so you're probably right on this one. Your uh, your calls on this will continue at eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy plus. Steph Curry's name out of nowhere came out of someone's mouth at the Little League World Series yesterday in a pretty unfair way. I would say that's next on ninety five seven The Game. If you run a small business, efficiency has never been more important. So for a limited time, Comcast Business is introducing small business savings. Call now to get powerful internet for just $39 a month for 12 months, with no annual contract and a money-back guarantee. All on the largest, fastest, reliable network for small businesses. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Ends 921-22. Requires EcoBill and AutoPay. Restrictions apply. New business, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment taxes and other charges extra and subject to change. After promo, regular rates apply. Life is hard enough, but BMW ownership shouldn't be. 
BMW of Fairfield understands that time is your most precious resource and making time for automotive service can be challenging. So we offer a team of mobile service technicians who will come to you when you need maintenance on your BMW. Contact the BMW of Fairfield mobile service concierge to schedule your appointment. There is a better way to service BMW. Visit bmwfairfield.com slash mobile service to book your appointment. Live on DAZN Pay-Per-View, September 17th, Part 3. Canelo versus Triple G to take the trilogy. Bad Blood, a score to settle. Controversy, brutality, pure hostility. For victory, for history, for the trilogy. Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. September 17th, live on DAZN Pay-Per-View. Visit DAZN.com. You put it in your mouth and you chew it up real good. I know how to chew gum, Dad. Hurry up, we got Gosh. leaks to fix. What are you two up to? We're fixing our leaky pipes. Yeah. With gum? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's hack, Mom. A what? A hack. You know. A do-it-yourself trick. No, the trick to fixing leaks and low water pressure is calling repipe specialists. You mean professionals? I mean, repipe specialists can repipe our whole house in one to two days. Fix the leaks and low water pressure, repair the holes in the walls if we want, and they guarantee their work for life. Got leaks or low water pressure? Call the professionals at Repipe Specialists, and in one to two days, they can repipe your whole house with new PEX tubing. With over 60,000 repipes completed, that's their specialty. You really stepped in Ew. it. I was just being... The gum, Dad. You what? stepped in the gum. The gum. Oh, great. Call 800-217-1636 for a free in-home estimate. And ask about their 0% financing options. That's 800-217-1636. Call today. 800-217-1636. Or visit repipe.com. DQ presents... Picture this. Picture the burger of your dreams. It's on the new DQ Signature Stack Burgers menu. A lineup of five premium burgers like the Flamethrower Signature Stack Burger and loaded A1 Signature Stack Burger with 100% seasoned real beef patties, melty cheese, and a combo of top-notch toppings and sauces galore. This dream burger is calling your name. <gasps> but it isn't a dream. You're ordering at the DQ drive-thru. The DQ Signature Stack Burgers lineup. Try today. DQ, happy tastes good. Remember when you were told bigger is better? Well, that's just simply not the case. Do you want a big bill? No. A big burden? No. What about a big bulky tank water heater taking up space in your basement? No, I didn't think so. What you do want is to make all of those things smaller. Navian tankless water heaters are more efficient and take up less space than outdated bulky tanks with cutting edge features that improve safety, simplify processes, and increase capabilities. Once you go Navian, you'll never go back. Learn more at tanklessmadesimple.com. Experience the crown jewel of Hot Run with family and friends at America's favorite car show. It's the Good Guys 35th Race Deck West Coast Nationals this weekend at the Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton. Explore over 3,500 hot rods, muscle cars, and trucks through 1997+. Plus. Don't miss the Good Guys CPP Autocross Series racing action featuring the Fitech West Coast Shootout. And see who takes home the Good Guys 2022 BASF America's Most Beautiful Award. It's all this weekend at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. Details at good-guys.com. Kirby is your driveway mechanic. They bring the shop to you with brake and tire replacements, oil changes, and much more. It's the ultimate convenience. Easy booking, transparent pricing, on-time arrivals, and service right in your driveway. No waiting rooms and direct access to your mechanic with friendly and reliable service. No middleman or upsells. They're so sure you'll love the convenience. Take $50 off your first oil change with code OIL50 at Kirby.com. That's C-U-R-B-E-E.com and use code OIL50. Kirby, your driveway mechanic. When people People have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian cuisines. They head to P.F. Chang's, where scratch-made dishes come from the 2,000-year-old tradition of wok cooking. P.F. Chang's wanted to explore new possibilities for their website. They turned to AmericanEagle.com. AmericanEagle.com re-architected P.F. Chang's website, integrating multiple third-party systems to create a unified digital experience. The results? Improved page speed and performance, personalized content based on users' location, intuitive online ordering, and increase in organic search visibility and a 40% increase in new users. For scratch-made Asian cuisine, visit your local P.F. Chang's or go to pfchangs.com for website design, development, digital marketing, and hosting that produce efficiency, revenue, and results. Visit AmericanEagle.com. P.F. Chang's and AmericanEagle.com. Another example of the best businesses in the world. Turning to the best in the business for websites, go to AmericanEagle.com or call 877-WEBNOW1. That's 877-WEBNOW1. 
It's time to say goodnight to that check engine light with the free AutoZone Fix Finder service. It'll help troubleshoot the likely cause of your light for free. So you can drive with peace of mind. Restrictions apply. Get in the zone. AutoZone. I put my trust in Kyle. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. All right. We'll keep going with your calls on this. 888-957-9570. Text, keep it coming. Comcast Business Text Line. Twitch, YouTube. Yes, Twitch and YouTube. I will continue uh, to the best of my abilities to keep giving you one for the thumb. Yeah. Right? It's Orange Creamsicle, uh, City Connect, Thursday now. Um, because uh, because that's the way I roll. That's the way I roll. And meatloaf is delicious, and it's worth the effort. So that's how we did it. And instead of using the food processor, you chose to go hand to hand combat that's right. and uh, score this one for the breadcrumbs. Yep, did uh, did it the old fashioned way. I earned it. Yeah, yeah. You go breadcrumbs in the processor. Boom. Nope. nope. Done. <laughs> That's it. Three pulses and it's over. So what do you want to see in the 49er game tonight from Trey Lance to the running game to the offensive line to I'm just praying for health? I mean, that's the number one thing I would say. Uh, we'll get to all of that. Back to the phones in a second. I do want to uh, bring attention to this, especially since you love yourself, the Little League World Series, at an incredible level. I've never met anyone to be as into it as you are. Yes, I'm currently in first place in a pool started by my good friend, Ned Freeman, a.k.a. the Nedbot. Uh, this Hawaii team, if you're not watching the Little League World Series, tune in on Saturday for the U.S. Championship and watch this Hawaii team, Mark. They are maybe the best Little League team of a generation. They're um, a juggernaut. They pitch it, they hit it, they catch it, and they throw it. Your Giants, your San Francisco Giants, your orange and black, they would be well served to watch this Hawaii team play the game. Well, explain to me, by the way, wh what team was this yesterday with this video that went uh, a little crazy? And we're going to have Tim Kirkjian, who weighed in on this here in kind of a funny way. Do you know what, what team was this? I'm not sure which of the international teams. It was an international was. team, right? Yeah, it was an elimination. Sensation. Sensation. I'll take the buck. I brought it up. <laughs> yeah. It was either Nicaragua. It might have been uh, Panama. It was in the loser's bracket, and uh, man, just this moment was one of those moments where uh, you want to get away, but he's 12 years old. He's 12 years old. It's actually maybe the third base coach who deserves, Kurosau, yeah. Yeah, who deserves the, uh, the criticism more than anyone. Kid gets to third base. I'm imagining he got a triple, or, or did he just run hard on a base hit? All we see is the kid sliding into third base, okay? To give you the visual the best we can before you hear the audio, kid slides into third base safely, then gets up on third base, and his third base coach is immediately encouraging him with everything in his body to dive right into the longest celebration dance you could possibly imagine. And the coach and the kid are doing it, and they're going, and they got this move, and they got that move, and we're dancing, and we're pointing at the dugout, and yeah, you made third base. And then, during the dance, the feet come off the bag. And the third baseman was waiting for it the whole time. And young man, you out. <laughs> Gutierrez, the third baseman, just, just sat there waiting for his opportunity when he was going to come off the bag. I blame Steph Curry. It's his fault. They're all trying to be him, even in the middle of a baseball game. <laughs> Oh, Tim Kirkson, shame on you. First of all, I love Tim Kirkson's voice. It's my favorite. Absolutely love it. You blame Steph Curry? You blame... What'd I get? What'd you give Two me? Two twos and a three. Well, it wasn't... It wasn't I, Whitey is the gold standard. I, yeah, like why mm -hmm. not? I, you know what? I'm never going to try that Stay again. Stay in your lane. Let's, <laughs> we, as a deep-voiced right. impersonator... Yeah, Gabe, Bruce, and scene. Yeah, so anyway... Yeah. 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 Tim Tim Kirkchin. I mean, there's a good good broadcast. See now that's a four. There's a good reporter. And, and you can I also mean, do your uh, your Harry Callish, yeah. who hopefully I'm still waiting for Harry to chime in on some football. Oh, we're waiting for the NFL season to start, so don't you worry about that. That's uh, a damn we, yeah, five. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get your there. Kirkchin's now down to a one. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, Yoda and, and Bochi had a baby. Like, why are you? Why are you coming Yoshi? after St- Steph Curry? <laughs> like, you're coming after Steph Curry. These kids are dancing over there on third base. Do, <laughs> do not. On third baseman. Stop it. Yeah, at the ball and they get, they get your butt on the bag. Anyway, <laughs> call timeout. This kid. This kid's out. And we're not even. One. We're not. <laughs> Uh, we're not even in the same sport, and we're so Steph Curry Stay in the now. Bag, sport. Well, tell me this: Is Steph Curry the sports gold standard for celebration after good plays? No, but if you notice in the video when the kid gets up, he does the splash like. I just knocked down a three. Right. I'm on third base. He did about one, 20, two, yeah. three. You know. <laughs> I mean, he did He did about 14 different moves. Yes, but he ended it with the splash. And right. you're right about the third baseman. And shout out Kyle Kelly for pointing it out on YouTube that it was Curacao, uh, the Curacaoian young man who drifted off the bag. And you're right. The third baseman's got the ball, and he sees all this going on, and he's like, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to sit here and wait. I'm going to wait right here. And the problem was is... The kid finally gets off the base, and when you have your knee on the base, the only way to get off the base is to lift your knee and then put your foot on the base, and there's that time where your knee comes up and you're not on the base. You better have your hand on the bag, right, or you better have your other foot on the bag. Or you call time. Well, these guys are over here doing the saddle dance with one another, and I, again, you mentioned it, he's 12. The third base coach appears to be about 51, and he's doing the exact same thing. I mean, he's guiding this kid through this dance. It was a like Gangnam celebration. Style. They were doing the whole thing. I'll give the third base coach yeah, credit for one thing. i give him credit for one thing. When that kid got tagged out, he looked at the third base coach like, what just happened? And that third base coach... He did not come down on the kid at all. It was it was like he immediately knew. He's like, my fault, my fault. Exactly. <laughs> totally. Thank you. I was gonna say like that. My bad because I totally just guided you into this, and now you're out. So at least he had the sheepish grin. Pat the kid on the back. My fault. Go sit down. Yeah, you're out. Foul. Yeah, totally. total party foul. What you oh, have? Yeah. A brain cramp? What would you have? A foot on the bag? What'd nope. you have? A truly? No. Trying to get a nice little buzz. God, I, already, I already miss Gary. <laughs> I do too. I already miss him. But miss me with the whole, oh, Bob Myers, you should be fired for not oh, signing stop him. Stop it. People are outraged. It was a great run. Let's just bask in what it was. I blame Steph Curry. Yeah, I do too. Kirkshin. First of all, I want to know how Joe Lacob doesn't have the money to pay Gary Payton the second, but does have the money to try and buy the Angels. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, that angel money will not fit under the salary cap, uh, I, just so you know. I also like the idea of just blaming Steph Curry for everything. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like, oh, I ran out of gas. Well, I mean, I think the... Damn I, it, Steph. Curry. I, I, think, I blame Steph Curry. I think the fifth inning of the Giants game yesterday. <laughs> Steph, where were you on that one? I blame Steph Curry. Totally. What the hell are you doing? I yeah. mean, you're in charge of Bay Area sports. Are you not? One for 13 with runners in scoring position. I blame Steph Curry. Totally. How many hits did he get yesterday? Not a one. None. I blame Steph Curry. And don't tell me he can't swing a bat. The guy's out there golfing about 250 dates a year. Took me an hour and 15 minutes to get to work today, Mark. I blame Steph Curry. Totally. Totally. I mean, he used to live over there. He found his way to not have to do the east to west commute anymore. So, come on. And I'm sure he gets stuck in that north to south. You could take 280 and take the long way from where he lives. I actually believe Steph Curry does not get stuck in traffic. I think he finds a way. Helicopter. I, whatever. Whatever. Find a way. Use the carpool lane when you're not supposed to. Have some sort of, Like, who's going to pull Steph Curry over and do a damn thing about it? Cop pulls Steph Curry over. You're asking for an autograph. You're not handing out a ticket. Let's be real. Well, you get the autograph on the ticket on and the just ticket, never right. submit it <laughs> and <laughs> keep it and frame it in your house. Exactly. That's exactly right. All right. Back to the phones at 888-957-9570. Willard and Dibs, glad you're with us. Hey, Jones in Atlanta. Uh, hey, Jones, what are you doing? Uh, I'm on my way to see my chiropractor real quick. Okay. Sorry that your back's not feeling so good. I blame yeah, Steph I Curry. Play. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a hey. I'm a blame the 49ers GMs because we traded three first round picks for kids from North. I've been so hot about this from day one. I'm so hot. I'm so hot. That's why I'm at a chiropractor right now. My back hurts. 
You understand me? My back hurts because we're not going to go to the playoffs this year, guys. Like, I'm just I'm just being where I want a rebuttal before you can hang up. Okay, so anybody, please tell me when was Trey Lance ever better than Justin Fields? When was Trey Lance ever better than Justin Fields? I don't think he uh, has to be better than Justin Fields for the Niners to still make the huh. playoffs because this team is not built around Trey Lance being the most important player. That that's my rebuttal. Well, uh, in my rebuttal, well, but same thing with Timmy T, right? But but Timmy Jones, never- Jones, how are we even answering that question yet? Like if I said it the other way around. When was Justin Fields better than Trey Lance? You're going to say Ohio cool. State, and I'm going to say cool. wildly irrelevant. Who the hell cares what happened in high school? I don't. And, and when, when has that ever been an indicator of anything with the future of athletes? We're just having this conversation about Jason Poe and Aaron Banks on the offensive line. Poe's undersized. Banks was at Notre Dame. Uh, like, I mean, Banks has been better than Poe at every stage of his life. I don't care about that now. Who's going to produce today? So let's see these guys play. Jones, do you want to bet on week one when they play each other? I'll take Lance. Yep. You want Fields? Okay, I'll take Justin Fields. Okay, let's do, do it. Hey, look, What's look, the look, bet? Look. What's if the bet? I win, right, I just want a ticket to the – I either want a ticket to a game or I want to come up to the show and have a debate with y'all. You, I don't uh, no money. Well, okay, first of all, I, one of those we can offer and one of them can't. I'm not in the ticket office of the 49ers. I don't have tickets to every game. You're in Atlanta. You want it, but will you come to the Bay Area and come in on the show? Look, look, look! I'm such a 49er fan. I'm gonna tell you how far I go back, right? Way before the beginning of time. Do y'all remember where we were before Jimmy G got here? Right? I was at that Jacksonville Jaguars game the day before Christmas. I think it was the day after Christmas, right? Out of bed. Jacksonville was good, right? Yep. Who won that game for us? Right? We were Jimmy G came in and won six games in a row. We have been mm. to the playoffs. And we went to a Super Bowl. So just because we didn't win the Super Bowl, we got to off this guy. Our team has always been based on defense, right? We don't need Jimmy to be the same way. So when Trey becomes the, well, since he's the starter, is it going to be because of Trey that we're going to win or get to the Super Bowl or the playoffs? No, it doesn't matter as long as we win. You don't need to give up three first round picks for that. Okay, Jones, Jones, we got a lot to answer on that, but you're you're Man, you're, you're so not answering answer you're not to. answering the bet question. Do you want to come on? Like, what are you saying? You're going to come to the Bay Area if the Bears win? Yeah, so we I won't pull up on you. Okay, I'll tell you, see what three first round picks lost you. You could have got Justin Fields. At the same position, uh, Jones, and still had our three first round picks. We didn't need to trade. Is up. this Mac Jones? Jones, Jones, what are you giving us if the 49ers beat the Bears? Mm-hmm. I got, I got dinner. I got dinner for you at Maestro's. Okay, done. done. That's yeah. done. That's done. You sit in here for a segment on the show with us. If the Bears win, you taking us to Maestro's. If the 49ers win, Week One, bet. Week one. And I'm a Niner fan. I know yeah, you are. No, I can hear we it can, in your voice. Yeah, we can tell. Yeah. So, now to answer your actual football question, and thank you, Jones. Thank Seriously, you, Jones. Kyle, write that down. I, that, that's, me and Mr. Jones. Man, medium rare. We got a thing going on. I can't wait. But anyway, let me answer what, what he's actually saying about... Medium rare. I mean... <laughs> Always. Steak cake. Anyway, <laughs> um... Why did the 49ers make the move to Trey is more intricate than you think. I know that most 49er fans, why on earth would you move on from Jimmy? Or there's the 49er fans going, my gosh, we need to move on from Jimmy. There's all the football stuff, and we've talked that out for three years. But understand the bigger side to this. The biggest side. It's money. We're talking about contracts. You're, right, you're talking about, we want Debo re-signed. You want Bosa re-signed. Kittle got re-signed. Warner got re-signed. The 49er opinion was, at minimum, even if Trey's not great, we think we can get what Jimmy gives us from Trey for a quarter of the price. A quarter, an eighth, even. That's, Way less. That's what they think. So the upside is Trey becomes Patrick Mahomes. Now you're the best team in the NFL. The downside is we think we can get the same thing from him and have the money to keep all of our other really important players. Trent well, Williams, the real downside re-signed. is he's not as good as Jimmy 
it turns out the downside is no, but that's he's what, an FCS player who's not yes, very good. But, but they their evaluation, I believe, got to the point where they thought, even if we still become this conservative offense, run it left, run it right, hey Debo, come over here. We need a first down. You take it. Even if that happens, then you're still doing it for way less and you're keeping exactly. all those other players around. Exactly. So that's a net win. Yes. And I mean, the upside, that's quite an upside. And the downside is, yeah, we can still win with a guy who is maybe not, even if he's not as good as Jimmy Garoppolo, you figure you should still be able to win games because your roster is so good around him. It's risky, but ultimately, you talked about your cost benefit analysis. It's well worth it. In their opinion, especially the way they use first round picks, quite frankly, to, to <laughs> send a couple of first round picks. This year you didn't have a first round pick and you got a guy in Drake Jackson that many people thought was supposed to be a first round pick anyway. Right. And by the way, the 49ers, you know, we keep talking about how the Rams handle the first round of the draft. This is kind of a low key thing I don't think a lot of people have thought of. The 49ers essentially did the same thing. They're like, look. We think we can get, at minimum, Jimmy G production, maybe better. Maybe we have a new pitch we can throw. Maybe we can throw outside the numbers. Maybe we can throw deep. Maybe we can get more mobility at quarterback. But even if he's not perfect, we think that he can run the same thing that Jimmy does and we'll be able to keep Debo and Bosa and Kittle and Warner, right? But they're also doing the same thing the Rams did, which was forget the first round. Who needs, who needs a first round? You need the first round when you We're, need a quarterback. Right. We are a good team. We are going to be picking 28th, 29th, 30th, whatever. We don't need our first round pick for the next three years. We are in win mode. We are not in build mode. So the Rams have been doing that for a while. And now for a three-year period, 49ers are doing it too. And year one worked out really well. You gave up your first-round draft pick, and you made the NFC title game, and it ended up being a late pick. It's practically the same pick they got Jimmy for. It's a late, late first-round pick. It's not that big of a deal. Right, and they got a guy who was a first-round rated player in Drake Jackson, and that's the point where you need a first-round pick when you need a quarterback, an edge rusher, or a, an anchor tackle on your team. So think about the 49ers. You trade up to get Trey Lance. You believe that he is your quarterback. You already have a pretty decent edge rusher in Nick Bosa. Guy might be ultimately a Hall of Famer. Sheesh. He was the number two pick in 2019. So you did that. You have Trent Williams at left tackle. And by the way, you already used a first round pick on Mike McGlinchey. He was ninth overall in 2018. So when you've had first round picks, you've used them on a tackle, McGlinchey in 18, a pass rusher, Bosa, in 2019, Kinlaw to replace DeForest Buckner, who, by the way, was also a first-round pick. Kinlaw, we don't yet know. Hopefully, this is the year where we can all say, yes, Kinlaw. Uh, you used a first-round pick on Eric Armstead, defensive lineman, hopefully an anchor piece. Trey Lance, we already mentioned. So if you don't use a first-round pick on these guys, Go ahead and keep your other picks to bring in guys like Debo Samuel, second round, Fred Warner, third round, George Kittle was, what, third round, fifth round, I'm sorry fifth for George round. Kittle. Yep, yep. So, you know, you can find value later in the draft, but the first round picks are needed for anchor offensive line, pass rusher, and quarterback, and you have all that covered. Man. Tuesday's going to be a big day. Huge. Tuesday's going to be, and then, so now I see why you're doing the stretch four. You'll be back on Tuesday. I that, will, yeah. That roster cut down happens by 1 o'clock. On I'd Tuesday. Be, I'd be shocked oh. if we don't have at least most of the big news prior to then. And, in fact, it could come out even over the weekend. It could come out the day before. Um, we'll, we'll see. But what the 49ers eventually do by Tuesday with Jimmy Garoppolo so that we can move on from this conversation. Because what I feel is really hard for fans to register right now it, it, as long as he's here, fans are going to feel like this is an option. And this conversation we're having, have, uh, having is exactly why Jimmy can't be here this year. Hell, John McClain came on an hour ago and goes, you can't have him in Houston because you can't do that to Davis Mills. Davis Mills in <laughs> Houston? 
If you can't do that to Davis Mills in Houston, you sure as hell can't do it to Trey Lance in San Francisco. So, got to go. Got to go. Got to move on and clear this sucker out so you can play football and stop doing cutaways to the good-looking guy on the sideline that you still think can come in and save the day. That's it. But do you do it on Tuesday or do you slow play it all the way up until the day before the opener? Use a roster spot on use it. Use a roster spot on that's it. That's a tough that's a tough play for me. It isn't I agree with you, but I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, I know you can. So if you if you cut them Tuesday, Seattle comes in on Tuesday and says, Thank you, thank you very much, and they grab him. Then we'll and, see you on September eighteenth. Okay, we'll, but then he has nineteen days to get ready. Niners minus seven and a half. You don't think the, the spread moves for your beloved Jimmy G? Sure, it's 10 right now. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. not 10. <laughs> well, it's not out yet, but... Oh, yeah, the look ahead line. Six and a half on, uh, on the road at Chicago, week one. The look one. ahead line, I think, is seven yeah. and a half. I is think it? you're right. For yeah. Seattle? I'd have to check, okay. but uh, I, don't, I wonder where the line would move. But Or do you use a roster spot and say, no, Jimmy, you don't get to go anywhere until yeah. we say you get to go somewhere. It's interesting. Yeah, Kyle, what do you got? One, that would be nuts. If like, they, if it's they held them, right, totally. Yeah, they can. That's it becomes sure. a that huge be story for two yeah. weeks if they don't cut him so next that's, Tuesday. So that's the thing. Like, next Tuesday, to me, the story is not so much if he's released. The story is if he stays. And then the next thing is where he goes. And how quickly it because happens. Because the release, like, if he gets released and goes to the Lions... <laughs> it's like <laughs> it, the, right. right. It's like oh, <laughs> we're gonna like, buy all right, the kneecap right. off. There's but, only there's, yeah. There's only two teams that would bother me, and, and and by bother or or just like get the hair kind of stood up on the back of the neck. Obviously, Seattle's one of them, and the other one's the Rams. The other one's the Rams. Matt Matt Stafford is hurt, and, and, and I don't know if he's going to make it through the season. He's a little bing. He's a little dinged up. Right, he's not hurt. It, he's hurt. Like, I mean, not hurt. He's fine. Not hurt, can't play hurt, but he's hurt. And Matt Stafford, by the way, usually by midseason, historically, is hurt. Right. And and so... They got Wolford. Yeah. If Jimmy's on the Rams and he ends up starting, (laughs) that could get interesting. Yeah. That could get interesting. Um, Alex Pavlovich joins us next. The schedule came out yesterday uh, for next year. And it is now a balanced schedule. Fewer games against the Dodgers, the Padres, the division mates. We knew this was coming, but the second I saw it, it didn't feel right. Um, So we'll ask Alex about that. We'll find out about the future if there is one for Brandon Belt. We'll continue to take your phone calls as well at 888-957-9570. Cleared to play next hour as well. We'll get the latest on Belt, Jason Verrett and Chet Holmgren and the rest. So all of that's coming up. Willard and Dibbs, 95.7 The Game. I blame Steph Curry. Summer's in full swing. Are you making the most of it with backyard barbecues, pool parties, and s'mores by the fire pit? Or have you spent another season staring at the same crumbling patio or cracked driveway? You deserve better. The outdoor remodeling experts at System Pavers can help. Get the outdoor space you've always wanted. And for a limited time, System Pavers will demolish and remove your old hardscape for free. This unbeatable offer can save you hundreds or even thousands. Start by calling 800-PAVE-004 or visit systempavers.com. Plus, enjoy special financing to get the ball rolling today. With 30 years of experience and more than 75,000 projects completed, System Pavers delivers more than just beautiful outdoor remodels. You get peace of mind knowing the job's done right. Call System Pavers at 800-PAVE-004 today. That's 800-PAVE-004. Or visit systempavers.com right now. All orders must be placed by August 31st. Financing subject to credit approval. See website for full offer and demolition savings details. Contractor's license 661575. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Jewel. One day I was in a dressing room trying to steal a dress. And I was like, I'm a statistic. I'm homeless. I'm stealing. And I realized if I don't change something, I'm going to end up in jail or dead. And I remember this quote that was attributed to Buddha that said, happiness doesn't depend on who you are or what you have. It depends on what you think. And so I decided to see if I could turn my life around one thought at a time. More at imlistening.org. Talk saves lives. This is a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup sound experiment. We're looking to find the perfect way to hear Reese's so you'll buy more of them. Here we go. Reese's. 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 Hey, get out of here, you little stinker. Reese's. 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 
peanut butter cups. That, that breathy one sounded very creepy, am I right? Get Labor Day savings at Lowe's. Buy one, get one 50% off select HGTV home by Sherwin-Williams Paint and Cabot Exterior Stains via rebate. And save on Lowe's exclusive Stainmaster laminate flooring starting at $269 per square foot. It's three times wear resistant and backed by a lifetime limited warranty. Shop Labor Day savings now at Lowe's. Stainmaster claims compared to standard residential grade laminate. See warranty at Lowe's.com slash Stainmaster. Conditions and exclusions apply. See store at Lowe's.com for paint details and restrictions. While supplies last. Offer valid to 9-7. Listen to Bonte and Shasky each day this week around 7 30 for your chance to win a 100 dollars gift card to kirby kirby is your driveway mechanic brakes tires oil changes and more get all the info on our contest page at 957 thegamecom finding great candidates to hire can be like well trying to find a needle in a haystack but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Why do we find popping bubble wrap so satisfying? <laughs> Why do we say boop when we touch somebody's nose? Boop? Why do we turn anything and everything into drums? Honey, I need those pots to start dinner. Why do we sing in the shower? I'm taking a shower. And outside the shower. This conference call is boring. Rick, you are not on mute. Why? For the same reason we play scratchers from the California lottery. Because a little play can make your day. Please play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to purchase play or claim. Everyone knows how beneficial therapy can be. But traditional therapy can be overwhelming, confusing, and inconvenient. When scheduling in-person therapy, it can be difficult to find the right therapist near you. And it can take weeks to get on their calendar. We knew there had to be a better way. And that's where BetterHelp began. I'm Danny, co-founder of BetterHelp Online Therapy. When Alana and I started BetterHelp in 2013, our mission was simple. Find a way to make professional therapy accessible, affordable, and convenient for everyone. BetterHelp works around your schedule and lifestyle. You can connect to a therapist by phone, video call, or even text message. You don't even have to turn on your camera if you don't feel comfortable. And if your therapist isn't the right fit, you can switch anytime with the click of a button because BetterHelp is designed with you in mind. See why over 2 million members have trusted BetterHelp for online therapy. Go to betterhelp.com slash you first and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash you first for 10% off your first month. In order for small businesses to thrive, they need to be smart, efficient, agile, staying ahead of the market at every turn, and finding ways to do more with less. That's never been more important than it is right now. So for a limited time, Comcast Business is introducing Small Business Savings, a deal for companies across the country. When you call in now, you can get powerful internet for just $39 a month for 12 months. $39 a month with no annual contract and a money-back guarantee. All on the largest, fastest, reliable network for small businesses with the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. So if you're a small business owner, don't wait. Call and get started today. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Offer ends 921 Restrictions apply. New Comcast Business 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Requires EcoBill and AutoPay. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. Call or go online for details. After promo, regular rate supply. It's the bottom of the ninth, the game's on the line, and your small business needs a loan fast. What's your move? Go to OnDeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. With On Deck, you can apply in minutes, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Go to OnDeck.com. Your loan is On Deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by On Deck or Celtic Bank, a Utah Chartered Industrial Bank member FDIC. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. On Deck does not lend in every state. All loans subject to lender approval. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM at HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app. One hop and it kicks off Crawford. And that's going to score two. Man. And I guess it had some funky spin. Two nothing Tigers. Off the bat, you thought, well, that's the inning. Now. 
back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Some funky spin. Sounds like that could have been the motto for the entire giant season, actually. Funky spin. They got some funky spin going on. I don't know. Make a play, Crawford. Let's go. (laughs) Come on, man. I mean, look. Routine. Oh, he stinks. Don't load the bases against the Tigers. That's what I hear from Giants fans. Oh, those Tigers. If you're playing the Tigers, you're not allowed to, uh, you, you should not be allowing a base runner. It, it, it should not be that way. Um, but you're going to see teams like the Tigers a lot more going forward. Games like yesterday, games like the Twins this weekend. The Giants will open next season in New York against the Yankees. And as Alex Pavlovich, our Giants insider, will tell us, Aaron Judge will be playing, I'm sorry, for which team in that game, Alex? He will almost certainly be playing in that game. Yes. I'll give you. (laughs) I like that. Uh, What do you think, by the way? I know there's been a lot of talk this week, A, because it does feel like the Giants are truly not going to make this run, Um, and B, Farhan Zaidi spoke to Tim Kawakami and and really got in depth. What kind of spending do you expect this offseason? It's really hard to know. I mean, I, I think they understand that they've, they probably have to change the way they do things a little bit. At the same time, like I, you know, the, it's just not the way they have built their team the last few years. And and uh, Farhan has said even, you know, I talked to him two three weeks ago. We did like a thirty minute show for TV, and I I asked him the same thing, and he says, okay, I just don't really believe in building around one player. So um, I would be surprised if if they completely shifted the way they do things. At the same time, I think there's probably an understanding. You know, probably from ownership as well. I, I've talked a lot about attendance over the last couple of years, and they probably understand that they need a little bit more star power in here. Now, does that mean you spend three hundred million or whatever it takes on Judge? Does that mean you you go get you know one of these other guys, a Trey Turner or, or somebody like that? I don't know, but I, I think there's probably going to be more than we saw last off season. But I still don't expect them to be the Yankees or the Dodgers or somebody. They just they just believe in building a different way. To build in a different way, either you bring in stars and you su- supplement around them or you try to really fill all the empty spots that you're going to have. When you look at next year's regular batting order, how many of those positions would you think that they're going to look to avoid the platoon situation? Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, it really comes down to the player. And we've seen them go back and forth even with individual guys. Like, they started... In 2020, they were platooning Belt and Crawford. And then last year, Crawford played every single day, basically. And, and uh, Belt did as well down the stretch. Now, this year, they came into the season with that plan. And, and uh, Belt's knee and Crawford's health and, and some struggles have changed it. So, I don't think they're strict. I mean, people will think they're just automatically going to platoon. And, and if you bet, you know, right-handed, you're not going to face a righty. I, I don't think they've ever been that strict. I mean, Darren Ruff started the year facing righties. It's just a matter of, of who the individual player is and, and what the matchup is. Um, I, I know people like to make the joke. I saw one the other day. It's actually, it was pretty good. I mean, I joked about Judge returning to New York with the Yankees, and somebody went, yeah, but Jason Boswell will hit for him like when a righty comes into the game. But they, they want guys in the lineup, legitimately want guys in the lineup who can play every single day. It's just a matter of, of finding those guys. And, and so far, they haven't found many who have been kind of everyday stars and, and everyday offensive contributors so that's why you do see these situations where they're playing left right because the math is the math on that i mean if, if you're not a superstar that's your easiest way to, to that kind of production is by uh, having the right matchup alex pavlovich our giants insider with us here on 95 7 the game um what do you think the future for brandon belt is giants and beyond yeah that's you know i think that one is is up to him and i, I think that one comes down to Look, it's similar to the Posey situation. It, I, I do think Bell can still play. I mean, I, I know it's been a really rough stretch for him. I, I do think if he would get a little bit healthier, he still is capable of helping either the Giants or, or somebody else next year. But at some point, and we saw this with Buster, at some point you have to decide, like, do I want to you know, not be able to walk in 20, 30 years? The, the knee is bad. It's a bad thing for him. and um, It's something that I think will bother him the rest of his life. And I've seen this even going back to Marco Scudero. I mean, at some point, these guys sit down and, and think about their families. Belt has two young kids. He is financially set for life. So I would not be surprised if, if this is the end for him. I also would not be surprised just because he, he had so much fun last year. If he goes out this offseason and tries to find a way to, to either strengthen that knee or maybe has surgery one more time and, and tries to give it another run. 
How about Evan Longoria at third base, a guy who can be bought out for five million, or you can keep him for thirteen? He's starting to show signs of being, at the very least, a halftime player, a DH, a good pinch hitter. How do you think Farhan and company will approach his situation going into next year? I think he's still one healthy, a very, very good player in, in the last two years. I mean, you look at his numbers, he's, you know, 25, 30% above league average as a hitter, which not many guys on this team are. So the issue for him is health, and it, it is, I, I think, the risk in bringing him back for $13 million or, or a high number would be that, yeah, there is a chance that we've seen it with Belt this year. I mean, there's a chance where the injuries catch up to you, and, and uh, Evan turns 37 in a couple months. So there's a, a very good chance that it just falls off the cliff. But at the same time, like he's one of their best players when he's out there. He, he does try to play through a lot, um, you know. And, and there's not really like a ready-made solution. David VR, I, I think, could be the guy next year, but I don't know that you want to go into spring training with, with him as your third baseman, given what we saw at the big league level. They, they have Bosler, Casey, Casey Schmidt is on the way, but he's been a double A for like two weeks. So if you have one more year with Evan, and, and it's another year where you think, you know, maybe we only get eighty, a hundred games out of him, but it's going to be a very valuable 80 or 100. I don't think that's really a bad idea. And, and look, they have the financial flexibility to do it. And one thing we know about them is they don't want to be locked in the long-term deal. So if you're talking about one year with him, I think that's pretty similar to the Crawford thing. Like, you'll take what you can get when he's out there and, and know that you're probably getting at least your value back. Um, hey, Alex, I, I feel like there's a defeatist mentality that, that that has taken over the fan base because of the lack of spending, which is that when we hear them go, well, Carlos Rodon is going to opt out. To a Giants fan, that auto- automatically means he's leaving. Why does, it, why does it mean that? The Giants, as you just said, have more money to spend than anyone. What are the chances Rodon is back, you think? Well, I, I would just say we just watched it with Kevin Gosman, who's – not as overpowering, but very similar. I mean, similar age, similar, you know, inconsistency, similar pedigree in terms of being a top of the first round pick. Um, he was really, really good for two years here. And I, I would just say, I, I have a pretty good idea of how those negotiations went. And it was never, ever close to what he ended up getting. And, you know, you're talking about a baseline here for, I think Robbie Ray got like 120 million last year over five years. Gosman got 115, 120, something like that. Like, there's a baseline for those guys when, when you go into free agency coming off that kind of season and with that kind of talent. You're looking at five years, $120 million, maybe more if, if somebody falls in love with you. And I, I think Carlos is a Scott Force client, so he's going to go out and get that. And, yes, yeah, the Giants have the money to do it. I just, I think, and I actually think they're right about this in, in most cases. Like, it's generally not a good idea to give an older pitcher, somebody who has had injury issues, um, $100 million, and that's how they felt about Gosman, and, and they went out and got Rodon, and that worked out beautifully. So if I had to guess, I would say that they'd probably do the same thing and, you know, take the draft pick and, and go find whoever the next version is. It probably won't be as good because Carlos has been unbelievable, but that's just kind of the history of, of this front office. And I, I don't really blame Giants fans who look at it and watch Gosman, who is very popular, walk out the door without really a, a realistic offer and say, that's probably going to happen again. And frustrating when you lose Gosman and maybe you lose Rodon, but another lefty who might be coming, Kyle Harrison. Any sense of whether or not he'll be a September call-up? Does it matter if they're still in the race? What are you hearing in terms of the phenom in waiting? I don't think he'll be a September call-up. I mean, he, he hasn't even pitched in AAA yet, and they've been very cautious with these guys and moving them slowly. Look, I, I think at some point, and they're, they're not – dead dead in the wild card race they're still kind of they have one little whisper of hope but i think at some point you do start looking at the future and start thinking about like how many innings do we want to put on logan webb this year how many innings do we want to put on camilo doval this year do we want to look at some of these younger guys and part of that conversation is not can kyle help us as as a bullpen piece like our left-handed relief that's been an issue that conversation with kyle is how do we set him up for 2023 in the next four or five years. The worst thing they could do is rush him to the big leagues, put him in a tough situation, um, put him in a situation where maybe he's not getting regular work. I, I think the most important thing for him is finishing out the season and getting that innings count where it needs to be. And, and look, he still does have some command issues. He's been unbelievable, but you look at the walk rate there in double A, there are some concerns. So for me, you know, we just talked about this for 10, 15 minutes. Like it's not a very good team. So what is Kyle Harrison going to do? that team. I, I think you want Kyle in a position where next year he is fighting to be 
um, in that rotation and that, you know, hopefully by the middle of next season or by May of next season, he is, he is pitching every five days for the San Francisco Giants. So whatever you have to do to make that possible, you have to do this year. And for me, that doesn't, that means he's not in the big leagues this year. He is finishing his season in double A and then resting up. Alex, great stuff, man. Great to have you on uh, on this off day. And uh, are you out in Minnesota? Is that where you are? No, I'm not. I have, I have. Unfortunately, that's the only ballpark I haven't been to. Um, but I had to skip that trip this week and had something else. But uh, they're going back next year, so maybe we'll do it again. They're going everywhere next year. Exactly right. Alex, thanks, bud. All right, guys. Take it easy. All right, there he goes, Alex Pavlovich. Yeah, it's just kind of an empty feeling when you see that schedule come out yesterday. Yeah, you but nailed like, it. They're going everywhere next yeah, year. Yeah, like it's it, it's fun to think they're going to start the year at Yankee Stadium. That's fun. But once you get into the season, it's going to feel like yesterday felt. Like, oh, we're in Detroit. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like what? Minnesota. What, what am I sinking my teeth into this year? And the expense is more games against the Dodgers and Padres where there's truly an atmosphere and a vibe and a rivalry that gets built. And, um, yeah, like I, we knew this was coming, but I looked at it on a piece of paper, and it sort of, yeah, it felt like a loss to me. First three months of the year, they play a grand total of six games in L.A. and or in San Diego. The first, here's your road cities, your road teams in order, Mark, starting the year. Yankees, okay, fun. You don't get to play the Yankees very often. White Sox, Tigers, Marlins. You have the unheard of Tigers-Marlins six-game road trip in April. Then you go to the Padres. Okay, Rockies, Cardinals, Dodgers, Toronto. Uh, One game against the Mets? Oh, no, no, three games against the Mets. I'm sorry, it it went down. You've got Houston. You've got Arizona. The Minnesota-Milwaukee road trip. It's just a weird... The way the schedule is, I understand what they're trying to do, but they only went halfway to where they needed to get to. If you're going to do this, do away with the American League and the National League and do just two... Do four divisions based on geography. Give me the Angels, the Dodgers, the Padres... The Giants, the A's, and the Mariners. And then give me six teams of Colorado, Arizona, you know, Seattle. You see where I'm going. Where totally. Just make it so that there are no more leagues. Make these divisions geographical divisions and do away with the National League and the American League. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it uh, completely. This is going to be interesting to see, or maybe not, uh, is actually the fear. All right, on the Brandon Belt stuff. Um, Doc Panty is going to join us here in just about 15 minutes. Among the questions we will ask will be about Brandon Belt. Is his career over? Also getting ready for the 49er game coming up later on tonight. And while it's very easy and obvious, I think, for most 49er fans to be like, yeah, Trey Lance, like that's what I'm watching. That's that's the baseline. I, I get that. There are a few other things I'm really looking for tonight. And, and to be honest with you, some of them are on the other side of the ball. I'm interested to see what Davis Mills out of Stanford looks like. I told you with that question of uh, John McClain, if you got a fantasy draft coming up, Damian Pierce, man, look out. This is a guy people are starting to pay attention, but rookie running backs can pop. Rookie running backs, that's a position where it's not like receiver. It's not a position where you're like, gosh, I really got to understand this and that like we watch receivers they've come in and talked about the Kyle Shanahan offense before and been like it's a lot it it takes a while to really wrap your head around it but a running back who can pop like bang that shows in the NFL right away which is a the concern for Trey Sermon and b maybe the excitement of a guy that you can grab in like I don't know round eight or something like that or even later yeah with with Damian Pierce but I so I got eyes on running backs tonight I want to see what he looks like and then I want to see this battle for one or two spots between Trey Sermon, TDP, and then Jordan Mason. It feels like it's just one spot. It feels like TDP is already on the team from all of the, the 53-man projections oh, I mean, that I've been Michael Hasty is what I meant. Yes, TDP is in. Jamichael Hasty is going for that last spot. It feels to me like Jamichael Hasty is already in based on all the 53-man roster projections that I've looked at. Judge Michael Hasty can play special teams, and he's the best ca- uh, pass catcher out of those three. For me, it comes down to Mason and Sermon. 
Which one of those two do you keep? And maybe you don't keep either one of them. That's where tonight for me is so interesting because if you are Mason, you don't want to you don't want to play in this game because if you play, that means that. Well, I guess for Mason, if you play Mason, yeah, you, maybe you keep Mason. You probably do. He wants to pop. He wants to make a roster. Right. Right. But I, I think that he's what he's already top five in preseason and rushing, yeah. so he's already popped. Trey Sermon, you don't want to play. If you play, you're basically being showcased for other teams, I think. Or or are they trying to prove something? I mean, this is kind of my point with Trey Lance tonight. Um, I think we as fans, we go, okay, here we go. This is game time, and the final decisions are going to be made. Don't you think Kyle Shanahan's already got a piece of paper? He already knows what the roster's going to be. Pretty much. Like, if something happens tonight that changes that, okay. Like, eyes open, there could be an injury, or somebody could do something that you didn't see coming. But by and large, they already know. They know, they know what their 53 They're done. Is, yeah. is going to be. If they don't, then shame on you at totally, this point. Totally. So what are you showing tonight? Who's trying to achieve what? Maybe there is one position here or there where you're like, yeah, not sure about this guy, that guy. And there is a when the lights come on thing. Like, that's a thing in pro sports where there are guys that just show in practice. And then you get into games, it's like it just doesn't translate. And, and likewise, and yeah, reverse, exactly. And reverse, exactly. Where guys is like the lights come on, and you're just like, bang, man, this guy for whatever bang! reason it works. So I don't know if I'm Jordan Mason though, like he doesn't want to end up on a practice squad. He wants to end up on a squad, and so I want to play and end up even if it's not on the 49ers. You know, like if he ends up getting cut and hitting waivers, he wants he doesn't want to go on the practice squad. He wants someone else to be like, we're getting that guy. Yeah. Putting him on the team. But that's tough because, as we mentioned yesterday, 32 players will be cut from 32 teams. That's basically 960 guys who are going to all be in that same boat of, hey, what about me? Can I get a job? And so it, it makes it hard, especially for players who haven't yet done anything in this league. Now, for Trey Sermon... It's kind of good news, bad news, because the good news is you've already been an NFL player. You've spent a year. You have that experience. But the bad news is there's tape on you, and the tape on you is not good. And a run-heavy team would be the one to say, yeah, we love running backs. We go through running backs. We saw this guy for a whole year, and even we don't want him. Yeah, That's kind of a little bit of a bad mark for Trey Sermon if he gets cut. But you know how people are. Like... One you, man's trash. Uh, you always think, oh, okay. another man's yeah, trash. Yeah, like I, I can, can fix him. Get my hands on that guy. Like my dad's got this awesome set of tools. I, I can fix it. I know. We think Kyle Shanahan, and in fact, a lot of people in NFL circles will tell you, as John McClain just said an hour and a half ago, Kyle Shanahan's reputation around the league is is, is great. It, it, it's fantastic, but no NFL coach. If you get all the way up there, you're a head NFL coach. Nobody's sitting there going, well, gosh, Kyle Shanahan's a way better coach than me. So if he couldn't get something out of Trey Sermon, well, I'm certainly not going to get it. Nobody thinks that way. So uh, maybe that does factor into what the 49ers do on Tuesday. Because, yeah, Jordan Mason is much more likely to make it through waivers than Trey Sermon is, I think, just by virtue of because they've all had their evaluation a year ago. And Trey Sermon was, you know, that's what he he was evaluated as a top three or four round pick. Right. And that's where he went. Yeah. And he spent a year. And for whatever reason, he was unable to be a guy to step in and get carries, even when you got late in the year and you had nobody. You had Elijah Mitchell and you had Debo Samuel. Those were your running backs. And here's Trey Sermon, a guy with fresh legs, a great pedigree coming out of Ohio State. Great resume, great body, great everything except the ability to win over his coach and be able to get on the field. And that's that's a very damning thing for a running back. Although, as we've heard, I mean, Kyle's actually said pretty good things about Trey Sermon for most of this camp. Much better things than they said about him last year. They said he's making strides. We just don't see it when we see it in the games. Um, and, and Mason and TDP have had really, really good camps as well. Um, and so, I don't know. That, that's kind of what I'm watching tonight because that's one of the things 
that really, really interests me. Okay, so Jason Verrett, Brandon Belt, Chet Holmgren, we will ask Doc Pandy about that coming up in a few. You know what we also haven't gotten to, which somewhere here in the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'd love to, uh, to bat around a little bit. I mean, don't you just love it when peanut butter hits jelly? Like, there is a match made in heaven and so that's going to work out great. And I don't necessarily even mean for them. I mean for us and the way we view this. The Lakers are annoying, and so's Patrick Beverly. So perfect. Perfect. Like, that's going to make it so much easier to be annoyed by Patrick Beverly. I don't know how that's going to go. It gives them a little bit of that mean streak. And so I think that that's probably a good thing. The other thought that when I saw the Lakers acquire him that popped into my head is they still got something else up their sleeve. There's something going on with because I don't think Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook should be on the same team. Oh, I want him to be. I do too, but I don't think something's going on there because that does not feel like a good mix. Yes, and it's also interesting when you have a player who gets traded to a team. And they trade you before you even have a chance to play for well, that sure. team. That doesn't speak well of you as an uh, an acquisition in terms of, yeah, Utah traded for you, but no, we don't know what number well, you're going to wear. We don't even give you a uniform. We want you out of here. They were dumping Gobert. They were dumping right. Gobert. So Patrick Same Beverly way they're was, about to was dump Donovan between. Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just a contract. Yeah. It's just a contract. So now you're off to, to Los Angeles. Yep. A second stint in L.A. having played for the Clippers previously. The only thing that that worries me is that Patrick Beverly is the kind of guy who might clatter into you and hurt a Steph Curry or injure a Jordan Poole or bump into a Clay Thompson. That's what this guy does. Yep, yep. So we'll see him a little bit more often than uh, than we're used to. Than you want. Uh, no doubt, coming up uh, this year. Uh, okay, Doc Pandia, on all those injuries we were discussing, pick your battles is around the corner. We'll see what Guru is wearing today. All of that is still ahead on Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. I'm Chelsea Messenger, helping you beat the books with BetQL. In baseball, sometimes overall numbers can miss a smaller trend that could give you an advantage. That seems to be the case in today's White Sox-Orioles matchup. Chicago starter Lance Lynn has an ERA over five for the season, but in four August starts, he's 2-1 and one with an ERA just over three. That recent trend could prove valuable for Chicago backers. And the BetQL model agrees. The five-star play of the day is to take the White Sox in the money line over Baltimore. Staples has everything for school at great prices. So this year, you won't go back to school. You'll be ready to move forward into art class. A four-foot replica of the Statue of Liberty using elbow macaroni. With glue and art supplies from Staples. By tomorrow. Right now at Staples, one-inch binders are only $1.99 each. Plus, select backpacks are 50% off. Everything on your list at amazing prices. Staples, this year we're not going back. We're going forward to school. In-store only ends 827, limit 30 on binders. At Left Coast Buyers, we buy properties all over California. If you own a house or an apartment building and want to sell it fast at a great price, call us at 925-434-5000. We can pay cash and close in as little as seven days. We buy properties in any condition, any price range. Do you own a property that is run down and needs thousands of dollars in repairs? Are you out of time, money, and energy? Are you looking for an easy way to get top dollar for your property and sell on your terms and timeline? Well, call Left Coast Buyers now at 925-434-5000. We buy divorce houses, inherited houses. We even buy vacant houses and abandoned houses. Do you have a tenant who hasn't paid? Are you behind on property taxes, mortgage payments, or even facing a foreclosure? Even if you're just nervous about capital gains or an upcoming recession, we've seen it all. So if you or someone you know owns a property and needs to sell, call Left Coast Buyers at 925-434-5000. That's 925-434-5000. Attention veterans, if you were stationed at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, you and your family may be victims of toxic water poisoning. You could be awarded financial compensation for your suffering. Cancers, birth defects, deadly illnesses have all been linked to the contaminated water. Congress is now holding the government accountable, but you must act now. Get your free case review. Call True Law at 877-560-8555, 877-560-8555, or visit sickvets.com. That's sickvets.com. Start your next 
next summer adventure at Hotel Via. Located steps from San Francisco's most exciting pro basketball, baseball, and concert venues. There's no better place to stay to get in on all the action than Hotel Via. Hear the roar of the crowd from the ballpark on a rooftop bar on King Street. Plus, 95.7 The Game listeners receive a 20% discount at HotelViaSF.com using promo code CHAMPS. That's HotelViaSF.com promo code CHAMPS. Hotel Via at the intersection of sports, entertainment, and technology. America's favorite car show returns to the Bay Area for a jam-packed weekend of hot rod and fun. It's the Good Guys 35th Race Deck West Coast Nationals, and it's all going down this weekend at the Alameda County Fairgrounds in Pleasanton. Check out over 3,500 of the country's coolest hot rods, muscle cars, and trick trucks. Plus, shop the huge swap meet and hundreds of vendor exhibits. Experience Nitro Thunderfest. Celebrate the 90th anniversary of America's iconic 1932 Ford and so much more. And it's all this weekend at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. Details at good-guys.com. The following is an attorney advertisement. If you get sidelined by a workplace injury, the workers' compensation attorneys at Boxer and Gerson can help get you back in the game. Our team of skilled attorneys will fight by your side for the treatment and compensation you deserve. We care about justice for injured workers. That's what makes us Northern California's premier workers' comp law firm. Call Boxer and Gerson at 510-345-2341 or visit BoxerLaw.com for a free consultation. Boxer and Gerson, your life is worth the fight. This week at Big O Tires, get up to $140 in rebate savings on select Michelin and BF Goodrich tires and up to $80 on select Uniroyal tires. Visit your participating Big O Tires for details and September 18th. Great deals on great brands. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Summer's in full swing. Are you making the most of it with backyard barbecues, pool parties, and s'mores by the fire pit? Or have you spent another season staring at the same crumbling patio or cracked driveway? You deserve better. The outdoor remodeling experts at System Pavers can help. Get the outdoor space you've always wanted. And for a limited time, System Pavers will demolish and remove your old hardscape for free. This unbeatable offer can save you hundreds or even thousands. Start by calling 800-PAVE-004 or visit SystemPavers.com. Plus, enjoy special financing to get the ball rolling today. With 30 years of experience and more than 75,000 projects completed, System Pavers delivers more than just beautiful outdoor remodels. You get peace of mind knowing the job's done right. Call System Pavers at 800-PAVE-004 today. That's 800-PAVE-004. Or visit SystemPavers.com right now. All orders must be placed by August 31st. Financing subject to credit approval. See website for full offer and demolition savings details. Contractor's license 661575. Live on DAZN Pay-Per-View, September 17th, Part 3. Canelo versus Triple G to take the trilogy. Bad Blood, a score to settle controversy, brutality, pure hostility. For victory, for history, for the trilogy, Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. September 17th, live on DAZN Pay-Per-View. Visit DAZN.com. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. Ah, thinking about gas mileage? If your check engine light is on, it may be affecting your MPGs, but the free AutoZone Fix Finder service can help. With the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes, you'll know what's affecting your gas mileage and more, and you don't have to drive too far to find the fix. The free AutoZone Fix Finder service is available at all 6200 stores. Get in zone, AutoZone. See details at AutoZone.com. Huh, look, it's Heartburn. How did he know we were at the beach? No clue, but he's not ruining our vacation. I packed Prilosec OTC. With just one pill in the morning, Prilosec OTC prevents excess acid production that can cause frequent heartburn. So we can enjoy ourselves. Speaking of, time for our luau. Aloha heartburn. One pill, 24 hours, zero heartburn with Prilosec OTC. It's possible while taking Prilosec OTC. Use is directed for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. Now, back to Will and Dibby on 95.7 The Game. Preseason football. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Interesting numbers on this preseason game tonight that may make their debut mm -hmm. on uh, Pick Your Battles. But before Pick Your Battles, it's time for a clear to play because the 49ers 
play football tonight. So let's get in here with Doc. Time for Cleared to Play, taking you inside the tent, getting you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay. Proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring an associate professor of orthopedic surgery, Dr. Narav Pandya. And it has been a minute, good sir. How are you? I'm doing good, guys. Yeah, I had a, had a little vacation time, you know, and uh, happy to be back. Missed you guys. It's just it's just not the same without talking to you guys every week. A vacation sensation. Um, yeah, was it uh, was it an airplane ride? And how do you, good doc, prevent a back pain after those long plane flights? It was was a cross country airplane ride. We went to the East Coast, and uh, I trying to get up every hour is a good thing. So I try to get mm-hmm. up, move around a little bit, uh, not not stay glued to the seat. So that's that's my trick. Well, getting up and moving around is not uh, advisable for Brandon Belt right now, who's been put on the IL with a with a knee issue. He's had two knee surgeries, likely headed for a third. What happens when the knee has that many surgeries and you start to get deterioration? Yeah, you know, it's a difficult situation. And I think when you have an acute injury, you know, you know one part gets injured, you fix it, it's fine. But when you get to these players at this age, who've had multiple meniscus injuries, have a cartilage injury. Then you go from having an injury in one spot to kind of diffuse degeneration, and it becomes really hard to come back. I mean, cleanups can basically, you know, where you go in there, shave some stuff out, can maybe give you four or five weeks of relief. But the tough thing is that you're not dealing with the underlying structural issues, and any kind of procedure that deals with that is going to be a six- to nine-month recovery, which could be devastating for a player his age. So really it's the goal of can you control the inflammation? And if you can't control the inflammation, the knee is painful and swollen, um, it's a really, really difficult situation. So this is why, you know, cartilage injuries, meniscus injuries are so much more devastating for players, unlike, say, an ACL. And I do worry a little bit about what this means for Brandon Bell's career uh, moving forward. Yeah, I, I, I'm just listening to you right now, and that's my initial thought. I know you're not diagnosing anything, but that, that sounds very, very pessimistic about Brandon Bell playing baseball again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there was an interview he did as well, too, I think, where he said, I'm not sure what this means for him moving forward. But, yeah, you... Not many players in general playing professional sports when you get the surgery three, surgery four can make it back. And in baseball, for the most part, it's pretty light on the knees. I mean, it's compared to football and, and baseball, excuse me, and basketball. So if he's having this much discomfort even doing that, that doesn't bode well. Hopefully he's able to turn it around, but I think uh, I think it's something to be watched and, and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't end up that way. Doc Pandia with us. Let's check in on Jason Verrett. They said it was not a setback, but they put him on uh, the, uh, the list that's going to uh, keep him out for the first four games. We, we know his history has been through so, so many different injuries. What kind of optimism or pessimism do you have with regard to his future? I mean, I'm optimistic. I mean, the fact that he's had two ACLs, he's had an Achilles, um, had a labral surgery when he was playing in college. I mean, clearly he is very talented to be able to still be in the NFL at the cornerback position, which obviously stresses all these things. So the fact that he's there, I'm very optimistic about it. I just think that his reserve, any kind of soreness you have in an athlete who's basically had these many injuries, you're being extra cautious, and it kind of pushes the timeline out. So you have a single ACL, you usually wait nine months, but with all his injury history, you may say, look, we're going to be a little bit more cautious, make sure everything is running on all cylinders. Maybe it might be 12 months, might be 13 months. So um, the fact that he's you know, potentially going to miss four games and he's actually recovered from all these things clearly shows that he's a tremendous athlete. And I do think because they said there's no setbacks. It's just them giving him a little bit extra time to adapt as opposed to a player who's just coming off one injury. Chet Holmgren, rookie for Oklahoma City, sustained a Liz Frank injury in a summer league game, a pickup game in Seattle yesterday. They say now he's going to be out for the year. What does this mean for a big man to have a Liz Frank injury, even though it's this early in his career? Yeah, that's a great question because I think a lot of, we don't see a lot in NBA players a lot, particularly in big men. It's more of kind of that classic running back wide receiver injury in the NFL. But the good news is if you look even at NFL players, regardless of their size or what position they play, about 90% of them will actually get back to play. And you don't really necessarily see a big decline in their statistics. And, in, you know, the one thing we don't know is what does it mean for someone his size who has his frame? So I do think that from a him getting back to play standpoint, um, there's a very high likelihood, but we have seen a lot of big men earlier in their careers. You saw Embiid, you saw Durant have foot issues. Obviously, they had foot fractures, but you know, it's a ligament injury, and then it can be problematic for the first couple of years. And what I worry about Holmgren is not necessarily if he's going to get back, but what's this going to mean in terms of his development? If he's developing, you know, kind of rehabbing from this Frank injury, can he develop the strength? And next thing you know, it's four years into his career. And he doesn't have the size, he doesn't have the experience, and he's out of the league. So the injury in itself shouldn't impact him, but in the context of who he is, 
I get a little bit more worried about that. Do you want to mention someone who's going to play football tonight? Do you, like do, do, do we do that? Yeah, <laughs> can you do that <laughs> yeah, in the preseason? I, why not? Yeah, until the Warriors start in a month. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say because there's a lot of controversy about it. Trey Lance plays football. Yeah. Tonight. I think it, it's there you idea. go. Yeah, simple. Yeah. Unless right he to unless it. he doesn't. Um, and well, and better. yeah, and probably yeah. shouldn't. But anyway, okay, thank, that's, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Doc. Appreciate you. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome right. home. Proceeding was sponsored by UCSF Health. I mean, can we circle back to that for just a second? So yeah, before can... we circle back to that, yeah. can we circle back to this? When a doctor, <laughs> when a doctor tells you after you ask a doctor question yeah. that that's a good question, right? Does that qualify me as a radio doctor? Uh, Do I have my radio doctorate now? Did you stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night? No, but I slept pretty well. Okay, that's good. Especially at your age. I had some crazy dreams. <laughs> Did you? I had a dream. Can you, oh. And you remember them? Oh, God, like, yeah. There's three kinds, for me, there's three kinds of wake up. That, you know, they say that we dream every night. Oh, boy, do but we. Most days, I think most people, you don't, right? You have no recollection. Then there's the ones that you wake up and you're like, whoa, like it's super vivid, but then it fades in like an hour, sometimes even a half oh, hour. Oh, yeah. You're like, and then it's gone also. No Michael Crabtree on this dream. And then there's the ones that you can still remember, like the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of your life. So you still have this vividly in your head from last night? So I'm in Pakistan, and I'm in, wow. this, I'm in this gigantic... <laughs> Like gymnasium, <laughs> auditorium, and there's a volleyball court set. Up. Are you refing? I, no, I'm playing. Okay. I take off my backpack <laughs> and I have my wallet. I keep my wallet, but my keys and my phone and in my backpack, my giant like traveler's backpack. I put it on the side. I'm playing volleyball. It's like a three on three. You know, slowly over time now, there's like a 17,000 people on each side of the wow. net. I mean, it's just. And there's people everywhere, and I'm getting some touches, and we're playing, and all of a sudden, there's music playing, and all of a sudden, it stops, and like the gym just quickly empties, and I'm like, okay, time to go. I go over to get my backpack, and I grab it, and it's just been completely ransacked. Now I have no clothing. All my clothes okay. inside my backpack, my keys, my wallet, everything's gone, and I'm, I grab my backpack, and I'm looking around like, dude, who took my clothes? I got nothing now. I got nothing. The emperor has no clothes. So why was everybody leaving? It sounded like it was, the match was still going on. The game was over. It all was. Yeah, I that, guess. That's I, it. There's no scoreboard. Everybody's running out of the place. Yeah. All right. And I woke up. And then that's it. I woke up in Pakistan. Oh, I woke up in uh, the East. Oh, Bay, in Moraga. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was last night's I dream. I don't. I don't think I've ever. A lot even, of vivid dreams these yeah, days, Mark. Why do you think that is? Because you're having a baby. No, yeah. there are reasons. Yeah, but you know we don't need to get into those on the uh, air. Hallucinogenics or what? Do, what do you? Uh, Maybe less agenics. Uh, okay, yeah. Less. <laughs> is that neutrogenics? Uh, Neugenics. R e l. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> totally. All right. All right. A little ayahuasca in my uh, in my game. Apparently, I don't, I don't even think that I've dreamt about being in Pakistan, let alone actually being in Pakistan. Yeah, yeah. I played pretty well too. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. My right. serve was on point. We'll have you back again for another <laughs> totally. match next week. Sounds good. All Sleeping right. is exhausting these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, anyway. uh, returning to the other part of our story. Please. Uh, we, I don't want anyone to walk out of here thinking that it's like controversial that Trey Lance is playing tonight. I, I just think that over time, you're looking at a cost-benefit analysis that is going to push us in a certain direction. And I know it feels weird now. The same way it felt weird when LeBron James and others started going, yeah, you're going to sit this one out. But why? Because. Nah. What? And then we got really mad, and some people are still really mad, but we've also now put a label on it, load management. We've gotten used to it, and it's just part of the deal. And, and uh, if you take the arc of what John McClain told us an hour and a half ago about what preseason used to be like when right. it was six games and guys were playing the full four quarters in the final game, where do you think this is heading? I don't, I, I, like, I so don't. Let's click this back to the Chet Holmgren story because Chet was playing a pickup game yep. with LeBron James. and Well, you're always going to live life. I get that. But you're you're going to live life. What's the difference between him playing a pickup game and Trey Lance playing an actual organized game? Uh, football versus basketball is what I would but say. But he's out for the year. I understand. Well, the injury and a non contact injury. An injury can happen stepping off of a curb. That's my it, point it, about right? Trey Lance. So, so are we just going to put him into traction no, until we need but, him? But, 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 
living life and even doing something athletically and comparing it to a football game to me is two very different things. But more on that coming up. You can certainly weigh in at 888-957-9570 and pick your battles around the corner as well on 95.7 The Game. Now with Xfinity, you'll get unlimited internet with gig speed and supersonic Wi-Fi. With a two-year internet rate guarantee, no annual contract required, and no equipment fees. Talk about knock your socks off. Ooh! Plus, a free Flex 4K streaming box. It's like hitting the streaming jackpot. It's all just 50 bucks a month when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data. 50 bucks a month. A price that's truly jaw-dropping. Oh! Literally. The speed you need at a price you want. Value that's simply... Bananas. <laughs> That's the new Xfinity Supersonic Bundle. It's kind of a big deal. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store to learn more. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto-pay. New gigabit internet customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Man, I slept. New z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep is made for people who are tired of being tired. I've never slept like this before. I've never woken up like this before. A melatonin-free sleep aid made with a botanical blend that contains clinically studied and effective valerian root, hops, and passionflower, shown to help promote better restorative sleep. z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep. Sleep this good. Feel this good. Available at retailers near you. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops. Like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. Ray Maliazzi here for eBay Motors. You're driving along and some nimrod cuts you off. You hit the horn. <laughs> Jeez, it sounds like a goose in distress. Time to head over to eBay Motors. They have horns for every make and model, not to mention horn pads, steering wheels, wiring, and more. 122 million parts. You can even go for an upgrade. <laughs> it looks like Mr. Cutoff Man needs a new seat cover. <laughs> Try eBay Motors, pal. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors, let's ride. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops. Like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. Ready for the party tonight? Yep, thanks to the free storage upgrade from Samsung with my new Galaxy Z Flip 4. Nice. Got the music? Just downloaded everything from pop to punk. Photo booth? My phone folds into the perfect angle. Instant photo booth. Meet endless pics. Oh, <laughs> can it make food too? I ordered pizzas, so yes. Pre-order Galaxy Z Flip 4 or Z Fold 4 at Samsung.com now to get a free storage upgrade and case. Valid 810 through 825.22. See terms and conditions that apply. And now coming in at number one. Number one. It's Kentucky Fried Chicken's $5 Mac and Cheese Bowl. Mac and Cheese, Chicken and Cheese. 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 For five bucks. Oh yeah, baby. Order KFC's $5 mac and cheese bowls on the app. Back for a limited time in original or spicy. That's finger looking good. Price of participation may vary for a limited time only. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-555-1509. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. 
Call Term Provider at 800-555-1509. That's 800-555-1509. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-555-1509. 800-555-1509. Mostly sunny in Santa Clara. Highs near 82 today. Weather brought to you by the Odyssey app. Get your favorites on the free Odyssey app. Listen to local and national news stations, plus your music, sports, and podcasts for free wherever you are on the Odyssey app. Alice in Chains with special guests, Breaking Benjamin and Bush, are coming to Shoreline September 5th and 95.7 The Game has your tickets. For your shot to win, head to 957thegame.com. I blame Steph Curry. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Jim Bowden. You know Jim Bowden? Sure do. Jim Bowden put out his top 50 MLB farm prospects for 2022. Oh. How many Giants do you think are in the top 50? Two. That's correct. And I'm sure you know who they are. Marco Luciano. Number 46. Oh. And, oh. Yeah, Marco Kyle Luciano. Kyle Harrison's got to be like 18. Number 23. Look at me. Yeah, look at okay. you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at me. Go to YouTube and do that right now. Look at you. Playing huh? volleyball in Pakistan huh? in his hey. dreams. <laughs> With high-level guests who shall remain unnamed. Ridiculous. Um, here's I hate his, my brain sometimes. Here's this rundown of Marco Luciano. He says that Luciano's got a special bat, uh, a special bat speed, and generates elite exit velo, but has always profiled as a power over hit tool player, which is why I have him lower than most in my rankings. Luciano can hold his own at shortstop, but I think he could end up at second base because of his below average speed and range. He recently returned after missing two plus months with a lower back strain. There is his rundown on number 46. Marco Luciano. Which, he's still young, so I wouldn't uh, necessarily be that upset about that. But, you know, Farhan Zaidi, as he looks back at this year, as he does an audit on this year, you can look at, you know, the failure of the Major League team and the players he brought in. That's a problem. But the biggest issue is his farm hands, not the far hands, the farm hands, his prospects, they did not move through the system. Right. Almost at all. Like the only player Harrison did. He's the yeah. only one who really yeah. moved up, right? I mean, I'm not the only one, but but yes, I mean, I mean, really I mean, moved Kate, up. Casey Schmidt just moved to Double A. That's where their teammates okay. now with with Kyle Harrison. Right. Uh, Will Wilson was moving up, then got hurt. Right. Luciano probably would have moved up by but now. He got but hurt. he got hurt. And then there were the Ramoses and Matoses of the world who, yeah. who did not have great. And your years. Bednars and your Baileys who yeah. just kind of they do were it. a little flat. And so, you know, to that point in, you know, the whole thing about the Farhan era was supposed to be about 2023. Just wait, the arrivals. Well, now it feels like 2024. Well, and he said it. Be, he yeah. said it to TK the other day. He said, like, this is like, we're not going to get a ton from the farm system next year. So they're going to have to adjust probably what their offseason plan was. And that means signing every single free agent on the market. They will sign them all. And the Giants sure. will be amazing. Sure. Yeah. So no, but they they will. They will have to spend more than I think they were thinking they would. But the interesting thing about you know, do you look for Aaron Judge, the big big shiny object, the three hundred and fifty million dollar player, Probably and then not. and then backfill the roster, or do you look to do a bunch of Jock Petersons and mm. you know Carlos Rodon's? Do you look for? I guess my point, Mark, somewhere is, in between would be do my you answer. Look for five guys making an average of five guys. That does cost oh, man, a lot. Boy, boy you I want to talk about spending. Guys. I could go for it, too. I'd go for burger. Yeah, I could go for Huge the butt. Five Guys Burger with the in and out Do you prices. look for a six-pack? Well, I think, again. You going to get a six-pack eating Five Guys. A six-pack of 20 player, you know, $20 yeah. million dollars a year. Six guys averaging about $16 well, million a year. Or one guy for 40 a year and then a bunch of 
Little, little backfills. No, I think he told you. He said he wanted two or three or four or five everyday players. Jock Peterson's not that. They're not going for That's a platoon Longoria's guy. Longoria's not that. They told him he was a platoon guy when they signed him. So I, I don't think that's what they're going for, but it does lessen your ability to spread out that roster if you spend $40 million on one player. So I would not expect Aaron Judge. I would expect a sprinkling maybe of the effort might go for the A- minus B-plus guys. Would you rather have three B pluses or one A? Yeah, that's that's the kind of question I think they're going to deal with. Yeah, but I think that he's more likely going to get two B pluses, a B minus, and four Cs. <laughs> Honestly, that's I think more the Farhan approach. Maybe, maybe. I mean, again, it's it's who's available, it's what's accessible, what does the market call for? Look, we all agree it's a huge off season. Here's what Bowden wrote about Kyle Harrison. Uh, solid sinker slider combination. Couple that with an overpowering four seamer at the top of the zone, and suddenly he's the Giants' top pitching prospect and one of the best lefties in the minor leagues. Throws from a low three quarter arm angle, which makes it tough for left handed hitters to pick up the ball, especially when he's frequently changing eye levels. His command needs work. Yeah, there you go. But that's that's Kyle to Harrison. be expected of a young pitcher. You don't often find a guy at twenty twenty one who has great command. You usually have great stuff if you're a prospect, and then the command will eventually follow. You don't often get a guy at 20 or 21 with great stuff and great command. Speaking of great, how about you and I with identical 3-in-1 records in pick your darn battles? Woo! Over here, three in a row, three in a row. Call our message phone, yeah. three in a row uh, so far this week, and we're heading into an interesting Thursday. But that means you and I can just sit over here in the corner for a second and wait. We have to wait our turn. I have a feeling I'm going to get pick blocked, so I've been hunting for a backup, Ooh. and I have a backup pick, so okay, I'm no good. longer concerned. You're prepared. I am not, but I'll do it on the fly if we get there because you and I will go third and fourth respectively. But it's Joey Spadoni, Spadone. ladies and gentlemen, who is currently bringing up the Rear Bad and beat. now show it was terrible beat. <laughs> I mean, terrible I blame the Dibs, Giants actually. Giants, no hitter. Giants were only, yep, I blame were, Steph Curry. They were only seven runs Thank away. You. Very I good. I blame Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's okay, Joe, because you get to pick first, even though the Giants will be not uh, will not be playing today. No, they won't. But the Niners will be, and I'm yep. taking them on the money line. Okay, that minus one forty eight. Money line it is. Oh, the, minus one forty eight. Yep, 49ers just need to win, and Spadoni just is win, in. baby. He treats last place the same every time. He's like. If it's 148 or above, I'm in. And now we go to Kyle Madsen for this selection. The Yankees are visiting the A's, and I think the Yankees are probably going to win that one by a lot. Okay. I've got the Yankees on the run line. There it is. All right, I Yankees on the run line. You had it, huh? I had a feeling. Well, then let's My hear- birthday brother, I because you know me, Mark, good teams tend to beat bad teams. Yankees are minus 124 on the run line. I thought, Yeah, but you got an A's fan in there. You know where that was going. I had a feeling that and, I was getting picked up. And so you got your backup, and it is? Uh, Toronto and Boston. Ah. Gosman is on the hill, and uh, he's really good, but uh, we got hit in weather at Fenway. 80 degrees at Fenway, and uh, Crawford for Boston's not very good. I'm going to say yes. There oh. will be a run okay. in the first inning. I'm going to your fee, Boston. And Toronto. There it is. 80 degrees when I tell Gosman, please. Um, and now let's go to the 49ers and Texans game tonight. You can go ahead and have your money line if you want, Spadone. I will be playing the over under. I think Trey Lance is leaving after two and a half plays. That's the end of that. Get him out of there and give me the under. Give me under 40 and a half points tonight in the 49ers Texans game. That's a big number. Yeah. 40 and a half. 40 and a hook. I will take the under and there's pick your battles for a Thursday and YouTube for oh. some reason is getting all these people who are suddenly coming to the feed. Hello to the new YouTubers. Hello to the new Twitchers. Are there's they pouring no, in? There's no doubt they are not looking to see what my creamsicle gauze thumb looks like. They they are here to find out oh. what is Guru wearing Man. today. Wow. That's a nice shirt. I appreciate it. Um, Man came in with a salmon. collar. It's Yesterday salmon. was amazing. <laughs> I mean, really, I you know. I, I went to you, my daughter's volleyball you game. Great. They handed me the microphone. I go, what's this? Are you singing the national anthem? I go, I ain't singing no national anthem. <laughs> Did you sing it? No. There's a little bit of tears that I'm running. Yeah. Because of R&B singer, you guys said I look like. Oh, and then my guy, Tyshawn Jackson, uh, I'm his OG from Union City, calls me a legend, Steiny. 
sends uh -huh. me uh, the changeover yesterday and was really disturbed. Why are they doing that to you? And I said, relax. I wore the vest. Yeah. <laughs> they were having fun. Well, while we're <laughs> doing right. stuff to you. He was hurt. <laughs> I'm a big fan of you on uh, Instagram Ooh. and your Instagram stories. Yeah. And you showed uh, a beautiful picture or a little video of volleyball yeah. from yesterday. But without your commentary... I don't know which team uh -oh. I should be rooting for. A, <laughs> I'll fix that. And, I yeah. mean, which one's your daughter? Yeah. What's I need a little Milan. bit more of a lead. Uh, I, I know you. your daughter's uh. Milan, but I don't know what team she's on. Yeah. And uh, like the sweeping pan, I need a little bit of a wider lens, okay. and I need a little bit of a slower turn, and I need some commentary. Right. I, yeah, I need I to know you. some context. That was preseason. I'll be ready for your regular Yeah, okay. Season. I saw that yeah. somebody was down 25-19 or 24-19. Yeah, 24, we were 19. Yeah. yeah, see, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how to feel. Yeah. I was feeling some kind of way. I didn't know who I should be rooting for. By the way, I uh, don't want to be the, uh, the the fashion police. So, Goo, this won't uh, this won't last every uh, every day or every week by any stretch. But I mean, now we need to turn the table to the other side over here. Okay. Yeah, find a go. man is showing yeah. up in a sport coat on a Thursday. Uh, there needs to be a reason for this, I would imagine. Oh, oh, I got Stein. a I got a rehearsal dinner in Sonoma tonight. Okay. I so but you don't need to wear this. the jacket now. <laughs> like wait, like well, I was on. I did something really? on TV this morning. Oh, okay. So did I. Okay. And again, yeah, I was you on, doing Channel Five? I was on KTVU though. Oh, I was on KPIX. Real quick, not about me and yeah, Gianna. Before I get off, puts the photo <laughs> up. Of yesterday, hey, she oh, stabbed so me good. in the back. Oh, she did! <laughs> I'm getting ready to say bye. Wow. She got a goose, yes. and there I am, looking like a broke genuine. Like, oh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So, oh, that's good. I, that's good. We usually talk for ten or fifteen minutes, so I'll talk now about this. Oh, you're so gonna, that, you're, so that, <laughs> your turn. Uh -oh. yeah. All right. All right. So, I think I had about we had about fifteen people in the house. Last oh, night. right, right. My sister. Her Shout husband, Gretchen. Rich. Love Rich. Great the thing. Yeah. So uh, they got here Tuesday, and they stayed overnight. Was your nephew in town? Bobby John or yeah. Marky? E Marky. Yeah, everybody's and here. Bobby John, too? Everybody's He's here. He's got a great family. Dude. I, I got to say this about the Steinmetz family. So, uh, great family. Uh, three o'clock yesterday, Rich, Gretch, and Mara and Chris, who's getting married, Mara and Chris, they say, you know what, let's, uh, let's go get some beer and some ice because we need it. They go to the Safeway on 51st and Broadway. It's a big Safeway. Yeah. It's a great Safeway. I know where Beautiful you're at. Safeway. It's right on the edge of Rockridge. Yes, it I is. I know where you're at. Okay. Three of them go in. Okay. Gretchen stays in the car, the passenger seat. While she's in the car, back window smashed. No way. Three computers taken out of their rental car. While she's in the car? In the car. She it's, was in the car. The whoa. rental car had tinted windows, so clearly they didn't think anybody was in the car. What oh. did she do? What did she do? When, like, she Well, at first she said she thought they got back with the ice and they were putting it in the car or something. Right, like she but heard a she noise. But then she looked back. And oh, my goodness. She saw hands coming in. and To the back seat. To the, the, or to the, the trunk. way back, the yeah. trunk. It's, it was like a station wagon type of thing. Like a, oh, you know. so there you go. Okay, I'm like, yeah, why are you yeah, banging what, what the are back they window? I don't know why I can't yeah, think Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hatchback or yeah, whatever exactly. you want. Yeah, exactly. okay. Oh, my goodness. So they just, and they just grabbed it home. and ran? Yep. And she obviously Got in the was, car, boom, she was probably frozen. Like, yeah, she exactly. was just, like, terrified. And you know, it takes, like, eight seconds. No, so. I'm embarrassed for the tale. I was... Three laptops. Yep. They're getting married. In the Both daytime. their laptops gone. Yeah. Rich's laptop or Gretch's laptop. They had to go back to the rental car place. Take oh, the car back. man. Willer, what is this? I mean, I mean it's happening wow. everywhere. So but the why windows are in the car? windows are tinted, they don't even know the person's in the car. How do they know there's laptops in the car? This is what I understand. Yeah. They got a mechanism. They have a, they have a cell phone. And if you say if you put Wi Fi, right, right. they can see Billy's, oh my yeah, Billy's laptop. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Exactly. Either man. that or they look Jeez. in and they see. I know. Man. It's really. Come on. Man. Oh, so man. That is. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Welcome to Oakland. I want to go home. It's actually welcome wow. to the Bay Area. Yeah, that's. Welcome, welcome to the, welcome the, to the world. Well, they're breaking in. Don't even leave nothing in it. Well, I mean, yeah, and well, your, your a, family you know. with uh, smashed windows and removed bags is... Well, I don't know uh, He what... got hit at the job. You got hit yeah. out front. I know, I know. Not to bring that up. I think... No, he's been hit like four times yeah. in the past three years. Yeah. I... Jesus. Yeah, I don't... 
Try not to leave anything in the car. Wow. Anymore. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, uh, I blame yeah. Steph Curry. Hey, uh, you know what? You know what I was thinking. <laughs> that, that works all day. I oh. woke up. I woke up uh, this morning. Looked at this. Uh, Giants. I know you're gonna think I'm kidding. Oh, here we go. They're Charlie still only five me. and a half back. They're only five and a no, half. Back. No, no. The other two teams lose every night. They, they are, stink. They lose every night, I, which is what it kind of furthers the, the frustration. Though I get the it, Brewers, but the pod, the well, the Tatis. He he killed it, right? Well, I mean, I mentioned it at the time. I'm like, that can be a hangover on a team, and it sort of looks like that. Like something on, happened. Mail? Se- something happened to them mentally. Yeah, and, and they just got swept at home. I think by the Guardians. Yes, is that, and the Guardians are okay. But, but the Nationals but, gave them 15 rounds. Good <laughs> lord, they cannot Man. get a run. Man, I, I bet on that game under seven and a half last night because the Padres can't hit. Oh, seven seven nothing, nothing was the final score. And I'm score. the dummy that took the Padres on the mean, run line oh, watching man. it here. With I'm seven telling you, nothing, I'm no. telling you, they they cannot hit. So it's kind of frustrating, though. Yes, Tiny, you're right. The numbers are the same, but like this was their opportunity. Man, yeah. It's still there. This was their. I know. But why but, do you but, believe? But now, why would you believe? Why would you? Because now you're going to go start playing Dodgers and Mets, right. and you're going to do all this. You got the you're, Twins tomorrow, right? Yeah, you got the Twins this weekend. But then it gets real tough for a second, and and you're not going to make up a whole lot of ground doing that. And the Padres and Brewers, they gotta win at they're some gonna, point. They're gonna right, like <laughs> somebody's default. gonna somebody's gonna start winning. Although the Padres have done this in September before, right. this is That's how true. they won in 2010. That's so, what they right? do it. Yeah, That's so what they do it. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD One San Francisco, always live on the Odyssey app. Yes, a hundred wins is still on the table. Huh? They you just, don't they want, just need to win out. You don't oh, want Lance God. to play. You want Lance to play. You're, you're yes, not ruining course, your it's not, yeah. Hang on. I want to label this right. It's not so much that I don't want him to play. The football fan in me does want him to play. He doesn't want Trey Lance to do anything I, other than preach, sit at home preach. in traction I, around got the a porcelain, bunch of yeah, the porcelain yeah, doll. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I, I, I would not play him. That's all. I would not play him. If and I why coach, would you play him? But only, he thinks it's okay that Chet Holmgren plays pickup basketball. I thought That's Chet just, Holmgren, that does give me a little pause. It does. Well, same, I mean, but, but I think Chet he would have gotten hurt anyway. But yeah, that's you know like saying. saying Trey Lance can't practice. Teddy Bridgewater, with a non-contact jersey on, preach, man. had his leg almost break off. Yeah. So anybody can get injured any time. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> the cost-benefit That's analysis of none. the nine yeah. plays that you all <laughs> want him to play tonight, and somehow it seems like in your mind he's only going to be good in three weeks if we get these nine yeah. plays. It's yeah. like, come nah, on. See, you're black and white. It's not it, worth it. Has he run the two-minute drill yet? No, he hasn't, Mark. In practice, he's though, He's not going to run it tonight either. He's going to run it tonight. No, he's not. In yes, practice, he, he will. Has, yes. <laughs> They're going to go two-minute drill. They might like, come out with a two-minute drill. Yeah, exactly. is first 50. First preseason <laughs> game. Guy. First preseason this game. Guy. He slid for the first time uh, in his football career. <laughs> He'd never slid before. He did that in a preseason game. Bravo. That was a Willard, box I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. I just it's Tom Tommy, Brady's playing. Yeah, it's, right, what's right, that about? Right. Oh, he exactly. took the last he three weeks to. off. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wants to, and I'm sure Trey does as well. And again, he will. I'm not all bent out of shape out of it. I just wouldn't do it. If, if somebody sat here and said, what makes more sense for Trey Lance tonight? I think it's to watch. Mm. I'm me. totally with you. Yeah. You have nothing to gain. <laughs> Not Other a than thing. getting a, in a little bit of a rhythm and you know, feel what if you jam your thumb on a well, snap? What if he? What if he trips on and falls down the stairs like our boss Matt Tahigian, who was limping yesterday after our show meeting? What if fall? Yeah, yesterday he fell down the stairs looking at his phone, and now he's got a foot issue. So I cannot. Is wait he to not see supposed to walk down what stairs? If I, what if call Trey him Liz Lance, Frank when you get there? I'm gonna call yeah. him Affleck. Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what if Trey doesn't play and he's standing on the sidelines? Yeah. Here comes Purdy, oh, sweep boy. right, I'll yep. see this. runs over. <laughs> And injures Trey Lance, who's on the sidelines, then, which he should have never been on the sidelines because he should have been exactly. on the field. Then Purdy, <laughs> then Purdy is going to be cut right there on the spot, number one. <laughs> Dibs is acting like the post-game press conference in Chicago. Lance is going to come out. They won 31-17. <laughs> to You're like, I really credit, I credit getting in rhythm yeah, in Houston. Not- well, how are we going to go? This is what I heard, Stop with I heard rhythm. this earlier. Rhythm. I heard this earlier. I agree. If it... So there's no rhythm. way there, there's rhythm. no way we're gonna tell if this was good or bad. <laughs> right. Rhythm, right. rhythm, rhythm. So I'm oh. with dibs. If rhythm, if Lance right. has four tell me touchdown what, passes. Tell me what happened Chicago twenty exactly. days ago. Tell me what Counts. happened. Tell me what happened twenty days ago that's helping you today. Go ahead. 
Are you in a rhythm? Look at you. I you went for a, here. I went tick, for a tick, thirteen tick. mile run, and without that, I'd be I wouldn't be myself. Without that, you wouldn't have a knee brace on every time you play golf. I'm actually brace free today. If Guru hadn't <laughs> given up Red Bull, he wouldn't be down twelve pounds. Got to get him tonight, mm. Thursday. Yeah, you're looking good. Fifth. Not yeah. a damn. Yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, wearing, on, care. On the wearing that feed, I have to share this uh, at Mojo SF on YouTube. <laughs> this is going back to your break-in story. Oh, uh, I heard Guru left the sweater vest in the car, <laughs> but the crooks left it. <laughs> So, wow. Come on, that's man. Wow. Just, yeah, they, I thought you were going James on. Brown. No, just, yeah, wife said he, she seen him love, though, like for that. your weight loss here Dude, on the YouTube feed. Anyway, as well. you guys killed me yesterday. Will there, and it hurt it when was, you start laughing like I it mean, was really hurting you I to couldn't laugh. help it. I, we went through every R&B singer of the last 30 that was years. Good stuff. <laughs> in 10 yeah, was gold. too much fun. Will, can I ask you a question? Of course you can. We've been doing the uh, changeover, what, about three months? Man, four or five. Oh, yeah, more. somewhere in there. And there's never been a bro hug. And I'm driving in today. Did you and Chef did you yeah. the bro hug? I mean, and how big. awkward was it for you to I'm watch like, we're the trying bro to do hug. a show. I didn't I'm even jealous. know. Apparently, everybody's going on vacation. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize. <laughs> and it's like next time Joe Shasky sees Dan Dill, he's going to have three <laughs> they kids were doing yeah. Yeah. and a yeah. bunch yeah. of problems. Did the baby go? Well, yeah. And you know, <laughs> I'm about so men and fences. Good. You know, when we did our show together, 51 weeks, we had a couple. Big I love how you know. How we many had weeks. a few big blow ups, right? We had some blow ups and. Uh, you know, it was it was me who mended the fence. I mended the fence with Steiny because I I offended Steiny. I came at you inappropriately. Yeah. I mended the fence. That was all love. But you know, but whatever. Yeah. I'm about mending fences. I haven't. <laughs> I won't see Joe again until I have a third child. Okay, so gotcha. right. I wanted to bring it in and make yeah. sure you know. And you're in that baby mood, and, giddy. So yeah, 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 yeah. I might yeah. get one on the way out. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> if I could if I could get a Sam and Polo hug on the way out, <laughs> I'm that. in. I'm oh, in. Oh, you guys, I'm, I boy. am in. Yeah, and, and over, a but he's clean, hug, Mr. Clean. I'll over hug here. you too, sport coat. Like Stani, no, so you're absolutely. in the wedding. You're walking with somebody. I don't think so. <laughs> well, then what's the rehearsal for? The re it's you a know, rehearsal dinner. Like the I mean, rehearsal. I'm, yeah. the, I'm her uncle. Yeah, oh, you okay. just got to be. <laughs> yeah. He's going to a nice yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yeah. I exactly. just flashbacks to no. my <laughs> shotgun yeah. wedding in the back. Go backyard. to the rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I may yeah. have one like of those the, coming. Yeah. But the bride and groom are going to be doing the same thing Trey Lance is doing okay. tonight. You know, they're just rehearsing. But if you and didn't then show you get up, a meal nobody afterwards. would be like, "We we got nothing done." I almost feel like you don't have to make it. No, he tomorrow's does have the to day. Make oh, it. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's okay. The, he's the uncle, and you know, yeah. and with his family, it's like his sister Gretchen, who we all love quietly. You know, he's she's our favorite yeah. of the three kids. I met Gretchen. I don't even know if Bob's making the trip out. I doubt They're he trying is. Trying to get but him to come, but he's not. An eleventh hour Bob pull, but you know, Gretchen's going to be there. We love Gretchen. Her husband Rich is just the greatest Look dude. At this guy. I love so him. you got to be there with Rich. <laughs> Their kids are wonderful people. His uh, Steiny's <laughs> wife Susan is terrific. <laughs> so he's got. Gotta be there. I, I mean, cannot remember my neighbors' oh, names. I and love this my guy, boy. like you, have you, a friend like this, you know yeah, every you single like person this. at this station's family's name. If I walk into the Steinmetz household today at three fifteen, it's hugs a plenty. Well, it. except well, for you know, you're not going <laughs> to be wearing that, are you? Of course, I, I am me, Mark. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to the rehearsal dinner, but uh, roar. yeah, I love his family. I don't want to go CNN on you, but before you guys leave, just back to the car break-ins. What can we do here? Like, it's a thing everywhere. What can we do to prevent yeah, this? Ride a bike. And I'm going to be real. There was a video last night of a bipper. That's what they're calling him. Yeah. He got caught. And the video had the bipper getting, um, you know, they they were giving him justice. And What's a bipper? Please explain. They got oh, that's the thing, the bip, that's they put the thing on the, that reads, the window now. Reads where it just the... cracks real silently. It ain't that. They just put the little thing up. Bip. And the glass. That's how they break the window. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Like so this, this guy got caught. And they feel and they they put it on them, and I'm not like J.R. So Smith. Like, yeah, yeah I'm not co-signing. It was that, uh, 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 but I felt like we need more. Man, it's just people are riding around in the daytime yep. with the occupant in the car. What, what if everybody just took everything out of their cars yeah. and went with the unlocking yeah. and the open windows? They'd be out of business, but that's not reality. Yeah, well, like and this either. is where you know you. I don't want to get into a Second Amendment debate, but this is why people carry guns. No, and Texas. I. You know, I'm not of that mind. I hear you, man. But this is why... The Lord is my weapon. Yeah. And, you know, the whole thing man. about, like, the catalytic converter... People, what is... Going if people didn't buy the materials that are pulled out of catalytic converters, then people wouldn't steal catalytic converters. But there's a marketplace man. for it, and therefore, it becomes a thing that people want to steal. Yeah, man. Yep. The bipper. 
I mean, yeah. what I movie are they in? Did they get back to the house and tell you had to feel ashamed? Like, I this is text. where I live. I'm, I'm embarrassed. No doubt, you man. Know? A little embarrassed, but it's all good. What are you going to oh, do? Yeah. What are you going to oh, do? It could have been worse, right? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, she was in the car. Right. Yeah, no doubt. Right. I mean, She's okay. She yeah. shook up. She I would have been shit, Willard. Man. Yeah. Heck yeah. You're right. just sitting right there in the parking lot? Weird. How come she didn't go in, by the way? Good because right? the mean, car was running parked. apparently. Oh, I find well, man. I find the grocery store, especially on a hot afternoon, <laughs> right. to be the most pleasant place on earth. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I go there twice a day. She Sometimes I just on her phone right. Stuff, like I'm yeah. like you know what I I'm gonna forget Cruising something on down purpose. The aisles. Just go back in <laughs> there right. Take time. Go through every aisle. I'm like it's 90 degrees outside. Give me the proto style. This is delicious. It's pleasant <laughs> right now. So please stay out of grocery store parking lots. And with that, Steiny and Gore next.